All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight is Tuesday, August 6th. Welcome to the select board meeting. Um, on my right is Francine Tishman. On my left is Matt Rowland, Chris Fowles, and our town administrator, Ed Gibson. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this meeting is not quite going out live, but we hope uh, shortly that it will. It will be recorded and available on the website by tomorrow. Just an announcement, uh, there, there is another of the Southampton Free Concerts at Kona Park, um, and that'll be tomorrow, Brian and Vicki show country. So if you haven't had a chance to go down there, it's um, very well attended and it's a nice evening, summer evening. Any other announcements, um, gems of wisdom, notes of gratitude, anybody would like to share? I'll just mention one thing of sort of, uh, thanks for something being in town. Um, for me anyway, it's fruit season, so I'm very happy to have all the orchards we have in town. Um, between the blueberries and the peaches, I've been enjoying uh, my picking lately at uh, Bird Haven and uh, Bashistas and Round Hill, just to name a few of them. So it's really great to have those so close by and I hope more people take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. Yep, wonderful. Okay. Support our farms for sure. And just to mention that uh, through a grant, the Council on Aging um, set up a pickleball court um, in the, within the tennis court at, at Conant Park. And so the equipment is available through the parks if you need to paddle some balls through the Parks and Recreation or if you're a senior citizen through the COA. Yep, it looks gr great. Thanks to the highway department for their help with that. Mm -hmm. And also the, um, I'm sure Ed's gonna mention this, but the uh, pavilion roof was also repaired. And uh, thanks for the community preservation funds. Um, so thank you town for supporting that. And also the chimney was repaired and it looks great. So thank you, anybody else? Um, we have no appointments and we have no hearings. So we'll start with reports. Who would like to begin? Okay, go I'll go since I'm at this end. Um, the bylaws committee met and forwarded to the select board for their review a state mandated bylaw uh, on recycling. And it's basically word for word um, of the state regulations that we're required to have in our bylaws in order that Southampton is eligible to, to accumulate recycling credits which then translate into dollars coming into the town. So uh, we should be seeing that in the next couple of meetings here and then the next special town meeting, it'll be reviewed by, by, by the residents. Um, I attended the zoning board meeting on July 29th and that group approved two uh, requests for variances, one on College Highway for the construction of a two-car garage on the site of a single-car garage. The variance was needed because the distance of the new construction would not be within the acquired, required uh, distance from the property line. Uh, but that was approved. Another one approved on Coleman Road. It was a variance to accommodate a construction error where one corner of a newly built house was 10 inches too far forward on the property. So they granted that variance. And then the other uh, matter that I brought up to, to their attention, which they already were aware of, was the bylaw that was referenced in the master plan that the master plan implementation committee brought to their attention regarding cluster housing development. Apparently there was a bylaw uh, approved by the town a number of years ago and approved by the Attorney General's office, but somehow was never incorporated into uh, the zoning bylaws that we currently have. So that's all being researched and I'll report on that when, when we get more information. Um, and because I went to zoning, I missed the MPI, so Master Plan Implementation Committee. So I'm gonna ask Chris, who's also a member of that committee, to report on what happened at that meeting on July 29th. Okay, uh, it's a little bit similar um, in that we started out on the master plan uh, reviewing where we left off on chapter three, which is the historical and cultural part of the uh, of the plan, and uh, had some discussion about the differences between the historical commission and the historical society and where 
some of our historical uh, artifacts, shall we say, are really located uh, on who's in charge of what. And then we actually diverted and spent time going back to an old issue, which is perhaps the same zoning issue on the Agricultural Preser uh, Preservation uh, District um, that had been mentioned in the in the bylaws, but um, I'm sorry, in the master plan, but we couldn't find any reference to it. And since then, uh, it has been partially researched for sure, and we have come up with what had been approved, and it just never got entered into our into our bylaws, but it was approved by the by the Attorney General. And we, at the time, had not found a map, but we have now found uh, at least a map of at least one part of the properties that is referenced for the Ag Preservation District. So we're, we're closing the loopholes on a couple of things like that. So we're continuing on. We'll have another meeting um, in another week or so. Good. Yeah. Any other committees or anything, Chris? Yeah, um, <laughs> I seem to be on a couple of them here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Um, uh, last night I went to the uh, Conservation Commission uh, meeting, and that was a very interesting uh, long presentation by our state forester, Sean Libby, uh, who talked a lot about uh, establishing a forestry master, um, sort of a master management plan and a forestry cutting plan. And this follows up to the, uh, the article that was passed at the February special town meeting uh, talking about the Conservation Commission uh, trying to do a good management of the town forest that it currently owns uh, or that the town owns and for Conservation Commission to manage those with appropriate um, procedures and then set up a revolving fund to be able to maybe use some of the proceeds from the sale of that uh, lumber or whatever there may be um, to use for other projects. So there was a good segue to follow up from that town meeting article that had been approved in February to have some information about how to go about then setting up a forestry master plan in terms of the cutting plan and where to begin. And it was a very interesting meeting on that part. That part. Um, other than that, I was also at the bylaws meeting. So I'm just uh, sitting in on my first meeting and we hadn't had a chance to really yet talk about the charge of what the bylaws advisory committee is going to do, but I shared um, with them what Ed had passed on to me from another district, another town rather, about what their charge was for the, the scope of, of what the um, bylaws advisory committee would do. And so we'll look at that probably the next time around. Uh, and other than that, uh, just attended a board of assessors meeting. So we're just learning some of the rules and regulations around town and, and uh, getting familiar with that. So. Great, thanks. Okay. Yep. Anything, Matt? Um, no real updates. PQB meets this Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, there's no capital committee uh, meetings on the schedule as of yet, and uh, school committee is reconvening after about a month break uh, on August 19th at 5.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And same here, the uh, COA did not meet in July, but they have a meeting tomorrow morning at 9.30. The open space did meet. Um, just continuing discussion, discussing um, various lands in town. The goal is to do priority mapping of uh, lands. We are looking, there was money donated around the time the Glendale Road, uh, Clearwater Woodland Conservation Area was um, purchased and there were donations made to Kestrel on behalf of a town conservation uh, efforts. And so now we're looking at either having a town specific fund going through um, an intermediary like Kestrel or the um, <coughs> Community Foundation of Western Mass, or uh, establishing a 501c3 organization. So that's what the committee is kind of looking into. We heard from our treasurer. Next meeting, we uh, have a representative coming to talk about 501c3, and then Kestrel's going to come back and talk about um, basically possibility of running, having it through Kestrel. So we're looking at all the advantages and disadvantages. People are welcome to come. Board of Health met on the 23rd of July. It was primarily executive session, so I'm not sure. Um, about that, um, and I'm about to reach out to their chair mm -hmm. for more details. Mm -hmm. That's it. One other thing, Rini, sorry, there's a um, community preservation um, meeting tomorrow at 5.30. Good. Uh, town administrator report. Let's see, updates. Uh, the capital approved pro projects at the Norris Elementary School have begun. Uh, the sidewalk replacement was started and completed over the past 10 days by Adam and Ruxton Construction Company, who provided the low quote for the project. They utilized a different methodology than we originally planned and removed each damaged section of the concrete sidewalk and replaced the whole section rather than just cutting out the areas around the cracks and filling that particular area. Uh, this methodology should have a longer lifespan and 
was less costly than the original estimate based on cutting the cracks out and replacing the concrete around those cracks, which was used to create the budget originally. Uh, the fire alarm replacement project is scheduled to begin next week at the school. The carpet replacement will be scheduled to be done over vacation periods due to scheduling of the contractors. And the door replacement is in the process of being awarded and that project will likely have to be scheduled over vacation periods during the school year also. Hopefully before what, it gets too cold. What, uh, mm -hmm. what about the other ones, the other uh, gutters? Leaks and sinks. Uh, I, the sinks and the gutters, I know they were talking to contractors about, but I haven't heard anything back as far as them actually scheduling that work. Okay. I have received a copy of the new busing contract for the Hampshire Regional School District and the Southampton Norris Elementary School from Superintendent Aaron Osborne. I will reach out to Durham School Services, Inc. concerning negotiating a memorandum agreement for emergency management transportation services for the town of Southampton. Uh, the buses which service both Hampshire Regional and the Norris Elementary School are housed in the city in the East Hampton. So they aren't far away. No. Uh, Art Lawrence and I attended the Municipal IT Roundtable event for cybersecurity, which was put on by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission last Tuesday. Uh, while the event may have been classified more of a sales pitch to the communities who attended uh, to join PVPC Regional IT Services, uh, Mr. Lawrence and I were able to pick up some very helpful tips and also make some valuable contacts. Art and I would like to start utilizing some of the free cybersecurity software uh, which we're made available, which is available to municipalities, if that is all right. Yeah, I mean, right now we have some agreement with Northampton, right, through a mutual agreement? Well, nothing on cybersecurity. So, oh, okay, it was just yeah. the cloud storage. Exactly. Right, so, okay. uh, Art uh, has been talking to the IT uh, director for the city of Westfield, and she's made him aware of some free software which we can actually add to our system, which we'd like to roll out. Let's see, part of the underground storage tank reporting system that the town must participate in for the fuel tanks at the highway garage requires that certain forms be completed and filed online for uh, DEP notifications. I would like to request that the select board, as the technical owners of the USTs, designate our highway superintendent, Randall Kemp, as the duly authorized individual to sign these forms electronically, since he's got the system on his computer. We vote on and, that. And we'll so, still own the underground storage tanks? Huh? But we'll still own them? Uh, yes. <laughs> there are, uh, you're, uh, as a select board, you're the official owners of all the property and all these little pieces of equipment when these government entities come back and are looking for sign, sign, <sighs> official signages. So it's either your signature or someone that you designated. And in this case, it's all going electronically, so it's yeah. much simpler to designate someone that is putting the information already in if, if they're qualified to do it. Okay. What would you like to do? Make a motion to designate Superintendent Randall Kemp as the individual to sign the UST forms electronically. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. So Matt and Chris, Ed, okay. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That'll make it much simpler. Uh, let's see, I was in West Hampton on July 24th as part of the Five Town Collaborative for record scanning and storage as the group did interviews for hiring someone to assist the five municipalities with the training of staff and scanning of records. The position will be paid through the grant which was received. The group came up with a recommendation to hire one of the candidates that was interviewed and we were waiting to hear back on the, their reference check before actually making an offer to hire this individual. Under the grant funding, each town will receive 150 hours of work from this joint employee. The contractor has finished the work rebuilding the chimney and replacing the asphalt shingle roof on the Conan Park Pavilion, which was funded through the Community Pr Preservation Funds. So, so thank you very much to the CPC. Uh, several members of the Park Commission inspected the completed work last week and were very pleased with the outcome. The building looks much better than it did a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Sure does. Yeah. Time for the concert. 
Yes, exactly. Uh, the fire department administrative vehicle has been ordered under the Plymouth County cooperative bid and should be available to be picked up any day now. The police SUV, SUV cruiser, which was also approved at the annual town meeting from uh, capital um, funds to be borrowed, uh, was quoted under the state contract, has been ordered and should be ready to be picked up uh, in several weeks. Old business, Jen Ramsey from East Hampton Media passes along an update for the town hall first floor meeting room audio video equipment upgrade. She says that the first floor town hall peg access equipment uh, proposal will be finalized and sent to us by April 13th. April? She will August, it says August, I just read April. Wishful thinking in my part, the year's going by way too fast. Uh, she will attend the August 20th select board meeting to give a further update and answer any questions which the board may have. Once the proposal is approved, a payment will need to go to the AV company. Uh, the vendor will order all of the equipment, install it, and train the East Hampton medium staff on its use. The installation will be sometime in November, December of 2019 as all the AV companies are booked out months in advance. The installation will need to be scheduled on a week where there is no select board or any other meeting in this room. Upcoming select board meeting, next meeting is August 20th. Select board meetings for September are to be determined. And Do you want to look at September and at least book ones? I think that normally if the 20th is already scheduled, then the, the two weeks after that would be the Tuesday after uh, Labor Day. Good for me. Yep, it would be the third. Third and the seventeenth. Okay. Yeah, I'm not available on the third. Third and seventh. Are you, Chris? I'm, I'm here on the third. The third is Labor Day, no, isn't it? It's the Tuesday after third, Labor Day. Tuesday after Labor Day. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I'll be here. Okay, we'll stick with the every other, unless we hear otherwise. So it'll be the third and the seventeenth. Third and seventeenth. How's that, Ed? All right. All right. That's Does anybody have any questions for. for Ed on the town re uh, administrator report? Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask where where we were might be with the annual report. We've got just about everything put together and ready to go to the printers. There's a couple local uh, pieces of the report that Judy and I are actually having to manufacture and do as we go through the learning process. So we expect that that'll all be done and we'll probably have everything to the printer next week. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any questions about the East Hampton uh, media plan in terms of the timetable? Nope. Well, certainly not desirable, but. <laughs> yep, I know. You know, if that's the best we can do. I mean, it's a shame that these meetings are not able to go out live. Yep. And then November, December, so long as they stick to that timetable, I mean, I could easily see that turning into later, but. I mean, it, this, this is probably not going to come across well, but I'm going to say it anyways. It, we don't have any other options, do we? Other than probably trying to take it on ourselves, hire somebody, try to find volunteers or what have you. Yeah, very little. Okay. Yeah, because it's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have any questions, Matt, next time, I know you're not going to be here, but if you wanted to pass along any questions. Well, it's the same that we all have. We're just unhappy customers, and they don't seem to really actually care very much, to be honest. Well, I think I think they did. Um, they were trying to fix a problem. They hired a consultant. Um, that nine hundred fifty dollar bill is still hanging out there until we hear back from Charter. But they determined that they weren't the cause of the problem. Um, yeah, we're not. I haven't been satisfied for sure, but they have done some things. Robert Floyd, 50 East Street, uh, as a board of director member at our last uh, director's meeting, uh, the suggestion was to invite someone on the select board to be an overseer, or liaison, uh, when the equipment is uh, being planned, being ordered, being installed. So that's your option. Uh, East Hampton Media invites whomever you may wish to Select volunteer. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how that helps. But. Do people have to have in order to do that? <laughs> well, it, it, it's more of, of being privy to the meetings that, that don't include the select board, don't include the Sampton Media Board of Directors. Um, so asking firsthand questions, maybe mm -hmm. representing the board. Not necessary, but certainly something that will uh, avoid um, the unknown and the frustration and the disappointment. I mean, I can just speak for myself because that's what I'm doing on, on the board right now. I'm just frustrated with the inaction and the timetable. That's what I'm frustrated with. So I can't say that I'm frustrated with the work actually being done. I'm just frustrated with the frequency at which it's being done, which to me is way extended. But we've been talking about this for a year. It's a cra uh, To me, that's crazy. But. Maybe, the, maybe the I, hanging the hat on finding not. charter, realizing it was their technical difficulties in that East Hampton media, which took a lot of the frustration out of planning what equipment to actually yeah. get. And then uh, our uh, executive uh, director went to a conference and changed the plan, a real 90 degree turn. So instead of the expensive, ineffective uh, mics, maybe having two in the ceiling with the slanted ceiling. So uh, no excuses, but yeah. that, 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 that took a- took the same a, place we were a year ago. Is really that, that took a month. On, and they I also had a new executive director within the last year. Oh, that's yeah, that's but at, that's least, at least at least there is a plan. Yeah. And, and the idea is that East Hampton Media has it and wants to invite somebody on the select board to not wait until two weeks for a select board meeting for an update. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, when she comes next um, select board meeting, yeah. we'll talk about that and okay. we'll see if, um, I think it's good, would be good to have a seat at the table and hear firsthand. I think it can only help. Yeah, I believe so. Thank you. So we'll talk about it next time she's coming to the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. The next uh, item of business is old business, and so um, it's the budget and expenditures review and then the updates on the ongoing projects. So did people have a chance to, um, I don't know if there was a recent, have we gotten expenditures and there revenue? Been. No. Mm. Are we going to get a, a year end? Yes. Okay. That'll be the next one. Next meeting. Okay, good. Um, e Street Bridge Mass Works update. Uh, just a quick update from VHB. Um, they let me know that uh, um, they had a team uh, meeting last week and the design is progressing nicely. Uh, we're th they are thinking that uh, they'll be at a 75 permittal, submittal stage for Mass DOT by mid to end August, so later this month. Good. And then uh, one thing that uh, John Furman did remind me about, since I wasn't here in the beginning of the, dis uh, the discussions on that, is that the current ma mass DOT requirements for design include sidewalks on both sides of the bridge. Um, this widens the structure mode in addition to the lane widths and bicycle accommodations uh, they will uh, need to hit. So the new bridge under these standards will be about twice as wide as what is currently there. At the same price. Yeah, and then uh, at one follow-up to this, just a comment. Is that at the same price? Yeah. Okay. The, yeah, this, that was the way it was always des designed for. Uh, and then one other comment is um, that as we progress through the design of the bridge, uh, it will be prudent to take up uh, the design of the redoing of East Street itself, probably right. the first note of that being from Route 10 to this bridge and then right. the bridge out to uh, County Road as, as a second part of that. So uh, we should be start thinking about hmm. moving forward and probably uh, with a design on at least this first stage. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Totally. Good. Did you want to say something, Francine? No. Uh -uh. Um, how about the Glendale uh, Clearwater Woodland grant? Good news there. Uh, yes, all, all the paperwork was filed. We've um, had gotten the uh, conservation restriction uh, back from the state with their signature uh, recorded and back to the state. So um, we have received the electronic transfer of funds of the $400,000 for uh, the Glendale Road um, Clearwater 
Woodland? Did yep. I get it right? Yep. Okay. Uh, land grant, so that is very good news. Then on the Pomeroy Meadow uh, Road Grant, um, we did get the uh, conservation restriction back from the state um, the end of last week. Uh, we were able to get that uh, recorded the beginning of this week. I overnighted that uh, to the state, so that was the last piece of the reimbursement package they needed for um, the Pomeroy Meadow DWSP grant, uh, which is for $216,162. So they have all those pieces in place. So my guess is in the next couple of weeks, we should see the electronic transfer of uh, those grants grant funds back to the town. Excellent. And then the Glendale Road Improvement Project, there was an update, uh, was that put up on the web? Yes, it is. It's oh, good. Yep. And if you want, I can read you what is on, was updated on the web last week as of uh, July 26th. Uh, the Glendale Road Reconstruction Project continues and is on schedule. The road closure to through traffic from Route 10 College Highway to Pomeroy Meadow Road will be necessary for the next few months between the hours of 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday as necessary. Residents of this section of Glendale Road will be able to enter and exit to their homes during this time period. Any exceptions to this will be posted. There will be police officers at either end of this section of Glendale Road who will be able to let those who live on this section know which end of Glendale Road they will be able to access their homes from when the detour is in place on a daily basis as the project continues. Detour signs will be placed to warn vehicular traffic of the detour and the detour route on the days in which the detour is in effect. As of Friday, July 26, all the water line replacement is complete and the new water services to the homes are active and in service. The old water main line has been removed. Approximately 60% of the new drainage system has been installed with the drainage on the north end of the project currently being installed. The contractor plans to be complete with the drainage systems on or around August 10th. Immediately following the drainage system completion, the next scheduled step in this project will be to begin excavating the existing asphalt road along with the base material, and then they will install new, new base material to prepare for the asphalt paving. Excavation of the street is scheduled to be August 10th through September 15th. The binder asphalt course is scheduled to be installed approximately the week of September 19th. The project is on schedule and the contractor, Gilleher Enterprise Inc., plans to continue to meet the project milestones and scheduled timelines. The contractors are scheduled to complete the Glendale Road reconstruction project by the middle of November 2019, pending any unpredictable weather. We appreciate your cooperation and patience during this time of construction. Please plan accordingly. While the majority of this project should be completed in November of 2019, there may be some final cleanup and closeout work done in April of 2020. Updates to this traffic plan and detours will be posted on the town website and the police department Facebook page periodically. Thank you. Great. Any questions about those updates? Yeah, thanks for all your help with all of that. There's been a lot of correspondence and a lot of... No, Rand, Rand, on that one, Randall was very instrumental in getting me all the new current information. So Great. thank you to Randall Kemp. Great, thank you. All right, new business, uh, animal control contract, FY20, City of Westfield. Everybody got a copy of that? Mm -hmm. And it's time to update the our memorandum of agreement between the city of Westfield and ourselves for um, animal control services. Okay, so this is, a, this is actually a letter from the uh, um, assistant city solicitor <clears throat> and they're asking for a signature on this, um, but they've also indicated there might be times when they may not be able to respond immediately to on -call, their on-call service. There is, I mean, the standard agreement uh, basically says that if the regular assigned animal control officer isn't available, uh, that the uh, Westfield's ACO, if available, will re respond at a, uh, a different rate to the town. So that's a standard piece. They are in the, pro they are one ACO short, which happens to be ours. And um, they are in the process of 
uh, interviewing and hiring for that position. It has not been filled yet. So they are letting us know that there is a possibility that um, if they do get a call and their Westfield Animal Control Officer isn't available, that there may not be one available for the to, to respond to the town of Southampton. Okay. There's a little bit of backstory on this uh, in terms of the select board, but I'm just wondering if anybody has any specific questions. Well, being the newest person, I'll ask. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm curious. I, I, my understanding is that there is um, uh, part of the the dog license fee goes to pay the coverage for the services that Westfield Animal Shelter provides us, and there's also a 50, 50 cents per per person assessment that goes toward that there, coverage. There is an annual assessment that goes through or covers the straight services, mm -hmm. correct. And it is done through a revolving fund, which is funded through the, uh, the dog licenses. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the annual assessment, if an animal is taken in, uh, Boarded, needs vaccination, needs medical services, what have you. Um, that is in addition to the 50 cents per uh, resident annual assessment. And the annual assessment is roughly $2,900. Um, if, for example, um, a dog is taken in, has to be boarded, hasn't had its shots, gets its shots, and uh, the owner comes and claims that animal, that resident dog owner is responsible to pay those fees. Um, now, if, my understanding is the dog's not released to them until they have a receipt from the town having reimbursed us for the cost. Is that right? That is my understanding, yes. Correct. So, uh, I mean, that, that portion is covered. Um, if obviously someone doesn't claim that animal and the animal is put out for adoption or whatever, then the town it does not recoup that fee from the owner getting the animal back. In, in addition to uh, the domesticated animals, is, uh, and Chief Fillingsworth is here, he can probably fill you in on it a little better than I can, but uh, the police department, when they get a call for from someone that says, I have a ra I think what's a rabid raccoon or skunk in my you know, backyard or what have you, um, the police department will um, call uh, the animal control, the Westfield Animal Control officer, Office, and they will help the police with those particular um, situations, which is also billed to the town and done through that revolving fund. And Chief Illingsworth can tell you by a, f by a far better job of basically our police officers aren't trained as animal control officers. Uh, there are certain things that, especially if you get a call of a possible rabid animal that you have to follow because in their case, their response is to shoot that animal. Uh, and if that officer were close enough to get splattered by blood or something from a rabid animal, uh, we have another issue. But Chief, if you just sure. t t uh, explain to the board of how sure. the police department you utilizes Westfield. There's really West two Field. components to it. There's that you have the domestic animals and then you have the, the wild animals. So with the domestic animals, you have oftentimes someone will drop a dog off at the police department or they'll call for a loose dog. And our officers will respond and try to identify where it is and, and if it's friendly, maybe even try to get a tag and, and con contact the owner. Um, in the event that it's not or it's skittish or aggressive, then what do we do with it? We don't have the resources, we don't have a containment facility, so if somebody were to bring a dog here, what do we do with it at that point? Um, we still have to have it housed somewhere. Um, then you will have to worry about the bites because, you know, again, we don't have that. What, what the uh, animal control officers have, that experience and those, those resources to, to deal with that. The wild animals, this is a concern for me in particular, is oftentimes we'll get a call for, let's say it's a potential rabid animal. Um, we really don't know. We can see this, look at the signs of what is rabid and what's not, but we have been, you know, um, times we're not certain. So you think to yourself, what do I, what do, I do here? You know, do I act and, in, in, you know, and try to, and historically we would dispatch these animals with a rifle or a shotgun, provided that it was safe to do so. I prefer not to do that. Um, less use 
of the guns is better. You know, there's, there's always room for error, ricochet of a of a bullet. If you're, you know, were to shoot a rabid raccoon, even though you think it might be in a safe spot, you could have a ricochet. Um, and then it's the disposal of the animal. What do you do with that? Um, historically, we'd contact the Board of Health, and oftentimes they would tell the homeowner to bury the animal. What happens if the animal they don't bury it, and say coyotes get it, and then the coyotes get exposed? And, and this just to send the head to the state. I'm sorry. This was to send the. Uh... Not often. Not often do they do that. You know, at least in, in my past experience, okay. well, very few times has that ever happened. I think in my in my career, that's not hasn't happened that often. Oh, okay. um, so the animal control will actually come and take the animal with the proper precautions, and they'll either euthanize it or they'll determine that it's just injured and try to rehab it. Um, we've done that with. I think uh, we had a bobcat one time that was hit by a car, and they came out and got it. You know, where otherwise we would dispatch it if, if they weren't available. But my main concern is injury and exposure to the officers, and they just don't have the training to determine, you know, what is considered rabid, and also even neglect of domestic animals. Um, someone might call in for farm animals that they people think that are are being um, neglected. We don't have the experience or training to make that determination. So having this contract is, is a really good resource for us. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of wildlife rehab uh, situation in the area? Yeah, like, we, like, we uh, use them. We like actually call them up for free. They'll, they'll come up for, in particular, owls. Yeah. We always, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll actually, officers will take the owls, put them in a box, and then someone will come and get them. Uh -huh. Is that like to Arcadia or someplace else? Um, no, it's actually, um, uh, he was a former uh, environmental police officer, um, oh, okay. Mr. Riccardi. He often does displays for uh, ammunition. Um, Doesn't love a mount, huh? Yes, yeah, and he'll, he, he takes them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Westfield ACO also works um, with a number of wildlife rehabilitators off the state uh, list that you right. brought to my attention last year, uh, Maureen. So they, they go by that list. They will, where they can't rehab them, if they can't, take care of themselves, they will work through that list. They also have um, a veterinarian, which I th think uh, she told me that is in Lee, Mass, that uh, they work with um, for um, if it, the uh, wildlife needs particular medical attention before it goes to the, um, the licensed rehab uh, person. So they do work with the, the state licensed rehab uh, so can I just clarify, the, um, if it's um, a situation of like roadkill, the highway department deals with that, correct? They do, yes. And then, so you, you, the police department deals when there's any injured animal, injured animals, wildlife, right. or stray. Right. right. I mean, okay. let's say it was a deer and it was in the road, we'd pull it off the side of the road and ask the highway department right. to pick it up, okay. depending on where. If it was on the state highway, we'd contact the state highway department. But okay. um, it's, it's more so those loose dogs that will go out there and try to assist. And you either have the dog that jumps right into your cruiser and wants to take a ride, or you have the dogs that are kind of skittish, or they have the aggressive ones. Yeah. But then, what do we do with them once we have them? Right. You know, right. how we do? We don't have uh, any containment facility that's appropriate for that. So it sounds like you're satisfied with this. Absolutely. Contract. Yeah. I know last year I had checked with um, Chief Goyette too, and he also said, you know, it's great because we, you know, some towns, if it's a rabbit, it goes here. If it's an owl, it goes here, and it's just, it's just mm -hmm. too hard to do that. That's right. <laughs> It could be confusing, I'm sure. Yeah. So anything else? Any other questions? Uh, and j just to go through, you've got the yeah. uh, package that uh, Lucy Dalton, our town clerk, had put together uh, today because Christine had asked uh, some questions and oh. actually I can answer those questions is uh, going through this sheet, it looks like in the past year, and I'll just say fiscal year 19, it looks like there were uh, 20 domesticated animals that uh, the, shelter, uh, AC, the Westfield ACO was called for and took back to the shelter. There was 14 instances of wildlife, and there were only two instances where the domesticated animal was not returned to um, the, the owner. And, um, you know, what uh, Lucy was trying to get at was our assessment is $2,900 uh, per year. If, if you add up the cost that's in that sheet of the other miscellaneous, whether it's boarding, 
supporting medical or the wildlife, there's another $2,800 that is paid through for through the revolving account for those other miscellaneous uh, expenses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a so, lot of it, so about fifty-seven hundred dollars for fiscal year nineteen. A lot, of, a lot of the fees are paid by the animal owner, though, are they not? I mean, if they get, if they come and take their animal back, yes, the town's reimbursed yeah. for that. That was one of my questions. I yeah. guess is how how much of the service are we really actually using? And then, you know, because there is that provision for, you know, the owner not coming back to get their animal, that then the town has to pay for it. I was curious as to what the frequency was of that, which sounds very limited. Which is yeah. Well, it does sound limited, but so then, what are we? Rec so, what is the delta? I mean, are we, are we, rec are we able to pay for this with the dog fees? No. Yes, we have not. Uh, we have not. We have not, have not gone in the negative as of yet. Okay. But, but I, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, both Lucy and Janine before her wanted to call the board's attention to the fact that. You know, it's more than just the annual ass assessment, and mm -hmm. you know, it's something we should you know keep our uh, eyes out. And if it gets to the point where if, you know it gets closer, went over, and there may be a need to remain in the contract, but perhaps we do it and separate it out and say, okay, we're going to need a little more information here, and you know, we're going to appropriate whether it's fifteen hundred dollars or whatever it is in addition to the revolving fund to pay for the police use of the wildlife type of thing. But right now, it, we have not come close. Mm -hmm. I think my only other question was regarding the, the mandatory hold days. Um, it mentioned here seven days mandatory hold for dogs and three days for other animals. And I looked on the website, and Westfield Animal Shelter seems to be closed four days a week. Um, so they are closed Monday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. So if you got somebody that got taken to the shelter Wednesday night, Thursday and Friday they're closed. I guess they open, they open Saturday, so that's your third day for a cat, I suppose. But I mean, it's just, I'm just curious in terms of the hours, how well this is really working. But you know, I can just see people that you know, might, might not be happy with those kind of situations where they realize that their animal has been taken to the shelter. They want to go get it, and they can't because it's closed for 48 hours <laughs> straight or something. Have you like heard that. that that's a problem? I'm just curious. I mean, it's it's in the contract. So I, I have not heard that on on yeah. my end. But, you know, I gotta believe if they made contact and left a message that they'd have to open up. Maybe. Well, that they and work it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, do, I do too. Because while it's closed to the, the public, as far as if you want to go in and adopt an animal or whatever, you know, they're still out. Whether it's in Westfield or here, making, you know, responding to calls, so someone's around. Yeah, just so that people realize it's not open every day. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Yeah. That's all. And, That's in the incidences of like the twenty dogs. Are you finding that? Um, it's the same, like, same dog, like six times or something. Um, there is uh, one particular household that has a little bit more loose dog complaints than others. Um, but uh, it's not so much the dogs. We try to take care of the dogs ourselves. You know, yeah. if, if we can get to the dog and, and look at the, uh, and the, the uh, as long as it's licensed and get the contact information, because um, Lucy has provided us with that those that information, right, right. we'll call them out um, mm. and have them come get it, <clears throat> especially if. It's, Particularly friendly. Well, like I said, they'll just jump right in the cruiser. We'll bring it down to the station. And, <laughs> Give them a ride home. Yeah, and uh, until they come. But you know, the the concern is we have to wait. We'll have the dispatcher actually contact them before we bring it down to the police department because mm -hmm. then once it's there and we can't contact them, and then we we contact the animal control. But um, they've been very. Uh, they come out. I haven't had any substantial delays or has ever created any alarm for us. Good. So what do you want to do? So you, you comfortable with yeah. bringing this? Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, do we need a motion? We need a motion. Yes. Sure. I move to approve the contract for the animal, animal control contract for the city of Westfield. Second. Okay, Francine, and then Matt. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chief, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks, Chief. Mm -hmm. Okay, next is the, uh, you all set, Ed? Yeah, I'll, t I'll just pass that uh, sheet down for everyone to sign. Okay. Next is the Community Host Agreement, uh, Volcan LLC. Yes, as one of the pieces of the requirement is um, Vulcan LLC, uh, 
Volcan is here, and Attorney Dick Evans, uh, who I think most of you know. Uh, you know, they have done their community outreach meeting. Um, their next requirement is to successfully uh, negotiate a host agreement uh, with the town of Southampton through the select board uh, to have a recreational marijuana shop uh, in the uh, Red Rock Plaza uh, on Route 10, which now I forget. Is it, what unit is it? G. G, unit G. Uh, so. Right next to Mikkel's coffee. Right? Yeah. So uh, they are here to talk to the board about that. Uh, mm -hmm. I have shared um, the draft template uh, that KP Law um, sent to me and I made some alterations with. You also have in your packet some uh, information of other agreements that uh, Attorney Evans provided mm -hmm. uh, to me, uh, which um, he likes, he doesn't like all the language in them, but he likes the language in them better than, than ours are. Uh, pers personally, I think there's a couple pieces uh, of the host agreement that if we can come to agreement on that everything else will fall into place. The wording will be simple. Um, there, uh, there is uh, the impact fee for that by statute a town can ask for up to uh, 3%. It is supposed to be representative of uh, the cost of the community of show up, uh, providing service uh, to that facility, uh, so Attorney Evans has done a good job of reminding me of that. It's not just supposed to be, you know, carte blanche. It's, it, they're supposed, it's supposed to represent uh, to the best of our abilities what we think, believe those costs might be. Um, and there's a, another piece in there that, um, as you are aware, uh, we had talked about a little bit that uh, some other communities uh, have asked for uh, for different purposes, probably the most predominant one being uh, to do education uh, as far as uh, whether it be health, any health issues or I would say more abuse uh, or of people under 21 uh, trying to utilize uh, marijuana now that's legalized here in Massachusetts. So. Um, those are the two monetary items that are in there. And then, like I say, if we can probably come to a mutual agreement that works for both of us on that, and I think probably the language uh, where we might differ would probably be the easier of the two to come to agreement on. But um, like I say, Vulcan and Attorney Evans are, are here. Uh, and I don't know if you'd like them to start off from you know, their perspective on this or how you'd like to go. Okay, so um, we've looked at this host agreement before, and we also had copies of the East Hampton and Northampton um, host agreements, so we're familiar with what uh, was in there. I mean, the big issues really are, from what I remember, is um, the impact fee, which, like Ed said, could go up to 3%. Some communities do less, most seem to be three. And then also the, um, the one-time payment, which is, you know, presented as uh, an opportunity to provide some education around substance use disorder, um, prevention and treatment. And then uh, the other issue we talked about that you didn't mention, Ed, was um, the Northampton shop um, very quickly was bought out by a national company. And we talked about whether there'd be um, something in the contract that addressed uh, transference of uh, the contract to another company. <clears throat> and what would that involve for us in terms of <clears throat> time, effort, or otherwise? So those are the three things that I came up with. But um, would the board like to say anything, or would you like to hear from uh, the applicant for the agreement? I'm with you on all of those things. Okay. I'm happy I, to hear from them. And I welcome any, yeah. Hello. Hello, I'm Dick Evans. I'm uh, counsel for uh, uh, Volcan Politol, mm -hmm. who is the principal of um, Volcan LLC, who is the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, he wishes to uh, establish a marijuana shop uh, at uh, the Red Rock Plaza in Unit G, 15 College Highway. 
I think this is the first establishment in the city, of, in, in the town of, of uh, Southampton. Correct. Uh, Southampton, uh, the majority of voters supported question four in 2016, as obviously did the majority of the state voters. And uh, so the reality of legalization has come home. I think Ed gave a very concise summary of the issues before us. As I would, as I would uh, describe them, they are, to what extent the town wants or needs to be reimbursed its cost uh, in the form of an impact fee. Uh, secondly, whether or not um, the, uh, by the, the applicant be, can be required to pay an additional sum of money, and I think it's an annual fee uh, It's in your draft host agreement, um, by calling it something else, in this case a contribution. And the third issue is uh, how many years should the impact fee uh, be a requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the statute says no more than five years. The template agreement says five years and then you'll ne negotiate. And if you can't come up with an agreement, then, it's, then it runs indefinitely. And I think that's totally a violation of the statute. I, I gave Ed a long list of, of the uh, respects in which I think that the template which I find wildly inappropriate, frankly, uh, is outside the statute. And I should add that I had an interesting experience uh, earlier this week of uh, going to a legislative hearing in Boston of the Cannabis Policy Control Committee. And, and I and, and a sprinkling of other lawyers from around the state testified. And the gist of our testimony was uh, consistent with that editorial I sent you today from the Berkshire Eagle, I hope. You circulated it, yes. which is the... I put it in the back of their package, too. Good, good, good. which, which I, I happen to think that municipalities around the state, I'm not talking about Southampton, but other municipalities have taken gross, grossly unfair advantage of applicants. And it's not only unfair to the applicants, it also contravenes the very purpose of part of, this, of the new law, which is to provide small startups an opportunity to, to get into the business and not, not impose additional costs and fees on them, and, and certainly not restrict the business to uh, big companies. So what I would like to suggest is that, uh, I don't know if you have a dollar figure in mind or a percentage figure or, or a, uh, a fixed fee. We, we, in our earlier suggestion, uh, discussion with Ed a few weeks ago, we suggested the possibility that instead of a percentage uh, fee, uh, which is supposed to be documented and based on cost, uh, that there just be a fixed fee. And I don't know if we have threw out a number, but I would throw out a number and say $20,000 a year. We'll pay you $20,000 a year for the right to operate. And that way it relieves the town of any burden of documentation and, um, and, and also has the advantage of not requiring uh, the applicant to submit his business records every year to the town and thus make them a public record. That's something we'd certainly like to avoid. I mean, you don't require that of other businesses, I'm sure. And, um, so, so those are the three issues, impact fee, the uh, additional fee, whatever you call it, and the length the, of the term that that fee should be paid. My suggestion for the sake of discussion is a $20,000 flat fee annually and uh, for a term of five years. And as Ed said, the rest of it, I think, would come together. I agree with that. Loken, do you want to add anything to what I just said? No, I think I, I agree. I mean, um, at the end, it's, you know, just want to say that it's, it's not easy uh, starting a business. Um, never mind, um, you know, it's one thing that you open a business and you'll be successful at it. It's another thing. Uh, the bigger piece is continuing that business success. So um, all these numbers and percentages has to make sense. Um, starting from Gecko, if we, we have a burden on our back with all these fees in a town that has only 5,000 population um, in a store that's 600 square foot, um, it's just uh, the, it, it, the balance is not there, I feel like. So um, we're just here, like, like Ed said, uh, like um, uh, Dick said, uh, something that we can perhaps meet in the middle with town um, that helps us get lifts us and continue uh, with the success throughout the years. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear, when the template was shared, it, um, there was no vote that was taken on the amount. That was just a template. No, no, you correct. So even though I, that I think twenty thousand dollars was put in on that one-time payment, that was not a, a vote that was no, made no, no, by no, this. No, no, no. That's no. why we're here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just to be clear, the, the twenty thousand that you're talking about for five years is that in lieu of the percentage, the three percent yes. percentage, and then Addition would there still be something else for the? 
potential education slash counseling no, fund? No, yeah, my, no. Suggestion, my suggestion is a straight $20,000 a year. For both things? Yes. Any other comments? Do you guys have any suggestions? I don't find that satisfactory myself. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't either, but are we deciding this right now? Or no, I think, I think I'd like to read through the things that I just got tonight in terms yeah. of some of the other host agreements. So a couple things I just want to say is one is, you know, our own, our lawyer, you know, developed this host agreement. I know you have been very involved with this and you have a very different opinion about the exact host agreement, but um, what we had initially was what our lawyer had developed. So that's, you know, what we had. Uh, the other it's thing is with what's going on in the surrounding area as well, which should certainly be the expectation of a new business that's coming into this market. Yeah, what I wanted to say is that it's you know it's not the same as any other business. You know, we're going to be in a very different place in ten years, and I understand that. But when you said it, you know, we want to be uh, open for business, but sh for sure, and I think that's a perfect location for it too, because obviously it's not going to be just Southampton; it's going to be also. I imagine East Hampton too, as well as people Perfect. sell, since there's no other, yeah. you know, shop anywhere near there. So it's not just Southampton uh, people going to that. But I just want to say that it, it is not the same as any other business. You know, this is a new business. It is, uh, you know, there. We don't want children to, you know, we want to keep our community safe. Of course. Um, the whole point of this was to do additional education, and I could certainly see offering, you know, Norris School, Hampshire Regional, and the Urgent Care Center, Coley Dickinson, um, funds towards uh, doing something, not necessarily 10 years down the road, because that's not when it's needed. It's when it first starts up uh, that we want to make sure we have education around what's okay, what's not okay with using these substances. So I think that's the responsible thing to do. Um, but what that looks like in terms of the funds available, I just think that's important. That's all. Well, the, other, the other question is the, you know, the, the impact on the community and, and the utilization of town services yep. like police and so forth. You have, Chief Fillingsworth, do you have any, you would have no idea of how to estimate what that cost might be because it hasn't happened yet. You know, That's correct. But I, I don't. I yeah, don't, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of what that. Yeah, but certainly there's going to be a police component. There's going to be sufficient to cover yeah. all of that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I would urge you to reach out to your colleagues, your municipal colleagues. Oh, absolutely. And, and see what their actual costs have been. Mm -hmm. I have not yet heard of any costs that any municipalities incurred even in the communities that are where, the, the, where the shops are open. For example, the police details are always paid by the, by the, the company's The police hotels. detail what? The police details. Right. Like the com paid the by the company, not by the municipality. Right. So yeah. to my knowledge, yeah, town, no. it doesn't cost anything to them. That's actually additional income yeah. to the police department, too. So, um, it, well, I, I just want to say uh, something. We're, uh, you know, we're, we're not here to say uh, we don't completely agree to this um, and we don't want to pay anything. That's not where we're coming from. Yeah. Uh, we, we just want to meet in the middle where we're both uh, satisfied with, with the policies here. You know, so this this was our suggestion coming from us to, as a starting point. But uh, you know, you as the board, you can certainly come back to us and let us know what your opinions and ideas are. Mm -hmm. And we understand that. You know. Um, uh, he said, uh, you know, coming into this business, you should know that what everybody else is signing up for. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would, I would agree with him, but also everybody else, uh, uh, places that they sign up for, they have a bigger population. Also, uh, Northampton or Southampton, they have uh, twice as three times or four times uh, size of population where they they are bringing a little bit more business. So that kind of uh, rolls into the effect also, in 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 a sense, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, but. But again, I'm not. I'm not here to say. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm, I, I disagree. I'm not paying any of this. I, I just want to see if we can come to some sort of uh, something in the middle where yeah. we're, we're both agree and no, so I, we can I, get this lift off. That's all. I haven't a chance to read the ones. I read the East Hampton one and I read the um, Northampton uh, host agreement. I haven't a chance to read the ones that I just got tonight, mm -hmm. but I haven't read one where there is no percentage. Yeah. Every one that I've ever read has a percentage. I know um, Deerfield was a 2% or 25 Most of them are 3%. Could you explain why you're proposing? I mean, I know it means that we don't have to look at the books and that therefore there's no calculation of the percentage to see what is, in fact, 3%. Um, and I'm just curious as to why you're proposing this. I know you've been involved in a lot of other host agreements, and I've never read one that doesn't have a percentage. Yes, I haven't either, but, but uh, I think this ought to be the first one. 
Um, the, uh, the, pers the purpose of a fixed fee would be to, to obviate the necessity of documenting all your costs and then ensuring that the cost that the town exacts or the monies that the town exacts from the applicant are reasonably related to the town's cost. That's, that's the language of the statute. And, I'm, I'm, and I'm, you know, I, you know, I hear a lot of municipals say, well, we don't know. And I hear that a lot. We don't know what the costs are going to be. So I'm suggesting that in the, if you don't know what the costs are going to be, then we'll just give you a flat fee. It won't matter what the actual costs are. And we'll and you know, avoid that to debate about yeah, whether, the, whether the, the impact fee is reasonably, reasonably related to your cost or not. Well, from what I can tell from other communities who have actually had um, some income from this, um, the income they've gotten from the percent far exceeds a $20,000 annual payment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's is that. Yeah, and as far as I can tell, it far exceeds the town's actual cost, too, mm -hmm. which is outside the statute. Mm -hmm. The Greenfield one looks interesting to me because it's a combination of a minimum payment plus a percentage over a certain amount of, you know, certain amount of dollars gross, you know, in, in this instance, it's 3% over, over the sales over $500,000. It's a $15,000 flat fee, and then 3% of everything over $500,000. I mean, so they're doing a little bit of both. Hold on, they're here? Greenfield. No, oh, Greenfield, wow, okay, okay. No, yeah. there are a number of different models in here. That, mm -hmm. Correct, and that's, that's what we're here for, to find our model. I mean, that's, 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 you know, that's our starting point, obviously, but uh, that's why we're here for, to see if uh, we can all come together and find our model, what, what fits for Southampton. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, that's all. Personally, yeah. I know a lot of communities um, are looking at this like some sort of a cash cow. I don't think that that's the way I really want to look at this. I'm focused on making sure that we, our community is safe, yeah. you know, that uh, the police are on board with what we agree on and that the community is. You know, I, I think I told you when on the host agreement, um, I, I live around the corner, mm -hmm. so I have two kids, they go to North School, so I'm, I'm, I live in this town, so I don't want to do something here that jeopardizes that anyway, yeah. so I'm, I'm with you on that also. Yeah, and we want to be pro-business. Right. I mean, we want right. business. That's one yeah. of the things that we're, we're looking to do. Yeah. I don't want to abuse the relationship either in, no, in no, any, any way. So, And I think that's one thing that makes it this particular, shall we say, pro proposal or opportunity attractive to the select board is the fact that it is going to be locally operated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, eventually, I'm assuming we'll get to the point where you know, it's like any package or any liquor store on the, on the corner. It'll be treated as such, but because it's the first one. Yeah. Yeah, there's a. And, and we'll all be asking ourselves, what was the fuss all about? I know. <laughs> I know. I, that's what I've been saying all along. We're going to be a very different place in town oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 20 years from now. It's changing, yeah. But I am, like I said, concerned because I think from the standpoint of children, and you know, this is going to be a new uh, business in town, and I just want to make sure that we're getting the right message out. Yeah. Any other questions for tonight? So you're um, you're also applying to the state for the license, correct? Correct, but we need the host agreement. So this is the first right. thing, and then you go ahead and apply the yeah. license. Yeah, we have a lot of a lot of the paperwork kind of um, we're getting it organized as we're speaking, mm -hmm. but we need this to kind of um, submit our application in. Before so, you take the next step. Correct, so th this, is kind of, this is where we're kind of stuck right now. Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. Needs, he needs the host agreement yeah. before he can file his application to the CCC. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he has to get through the, his, get his provisional license from the CCC, which could be six or eight months at the rate they're now going before he can even file his application for a special permit. Yeah, I think permit. he said a year, uh, right? Board. Correct, yeah. So yeah. this is our goal, I remember, I, I, we said that our goal is a year, so um, uh, that, uh, that our doors are open, so um, in order for this to move, because uh, like I, I met with the designers this morning, actually all the concerns that you had, we, we discussed all of them. Great. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we look properly from outside, that we're gonna look properly from inside. I mentioned a couple of your concerns about uh, fire alarms that you guys can see. Uh, uh, some sort of like light, remember you, you told me something like that? So, sensors, wasn't it? I'm sorry? Motion yeah, sensors. Yeah, motion sensors, yes. Um, so uh, we're going through all those checklists right now as Great. we're speaking. So, um, but obviously in order to move forward, we need yeah. the whole segment going forward. Yeah, so we obviously want to support you and we don't want to hold yeah. this up either, but yeah. we'll go through the what you proposed and also yeah. what um, 
what we have to look at today, and then we'll put it on for the twentieth. Yeah, the twentieth, the next meeting, which is two weeks. Okay. Okay. Can can and Ed and I have conversations in the meantime? Uh, I wouldn't want to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, if you would let your thoughts know, be known to him, I'd be grateful so, I, so he and I can our, chat. Uh, Hopefully by two weeks from now, we'll have an he's agreement. He's our CFO. He's our town yeah. administrator. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, like to have, I'd like to be able to sign something in two weeks. Yeah, that if, sounds good. If we can have a good exchange between now and then. I'm happy to. Good, good. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mom. Thank you. Good seeing you both again. Thank, Thank you, you both. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Um, that's I don't. That's not necessarily an executive session um, situation. Is having a this, discussion about this? No, because we. That's part of it. Has to be an open session. It's it. We can just. Like next meeting, next meeting, and then they want to expedite. Yeah. Yep. No, I mean, you know, I mean, there are so many options out there. Uh, you know, you can stick to the percentage option and say, okay, and and you know, Deer Deerfield's probably the one I have seen. There might be one other one that is under, you know, three so percent. It's a, it's a, Two two percent. Yeah. Uh, you know, green Greenfield is to me very unique. Uh, you know, the fifteen thousand and then three percent over um, five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, you know, what quickly I was doing on my calculator as they as they were talking to, and, and I think why percentage got so popular is no one knows if these places are going to do $100,000 or $7 million, yeah, right. you know, type of thing. But, you know, it, it, wasn't, okay. it wasn't designed as, shall we say, a revenue generator. It was designed you're supposed to cover your cost. Now, it's only for a limited period of time as well. And, and I think, so yeah, I th I well, I think at the end of, if you did a five-year, which basically is the maximum that is currently allowed, I firmly believe it the end of that five years, whether it says you can renegotiate or, or how you put it, I think the whole thing is going to have, the market is going to have been, I don't know if it would be fully matured, saturated, what have you, but that whole piece is going to change. So, yeah. yeah. So, But that yeah. also gives us time, as we had talked about, to document what our real costs are for the police, for the, you know, Board of Health, for and whoever I, else has to go in there. But I think you're going to also see them go doing this. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, one, one of the things I was quickly doing was, Okay, if what's twenty thousand dollars? Well, if they did a million dollars, it's two percent. So, you know, do you want to be closer to two than three? Do you want to do some type of hybrid? And maybe you turn around and say, "Tell you what, we'll do the twenty thousand dollars or whatever that X amount of dollars you come up with in your, in your head is, up to a million. And if you're doing over a million, because now, theoretically, you're having more traffic coming into that area or whatever, which might increase our cost. Now we want 2.5% or 3% on anything over a million. Well, the Greenfield one looks interesting to me because it has a flat fee and then 3% right. over. And then it, it, over the life of the contract, the fee drops from 15 mm. to 7,500. Yeah. But so does the so does the threshold for the three percent. It drops to two hundred fifty thousand from five hundred thousand. So I mean, anticipating that there's going to be yeah. what you're talking about in terms of saturation, and and I think this kind of a plan kind of accommodates it. And and yeah, and I think an what, what I think what they tried to do is say, okay, you know, there's going to be st startup costs. You're going to have to you know, generate out of this, and it might be slower going in the beginning, so we'll take it somewhat easier on you in the beginning years, and maybe as you build up your business, we might get a little bit more out of you. Mm -hmm. You said that there was a contract that you had seen that addresses the issue of uh, transferring to another company. Yeah, it's, it's basically, I'll, I'll get the language, it's basic, it was basically done, it was the same exact thing, 
as this. It was a community got the applica application, or I'm going to call it an application for a host agreement or the interest in a host agreement. It was a, another local, uh, locally operated local person that was going to open it up. Uh, the community was extremely, shall we say, afraid that in the future that it would change from that local operation to being bought out by a national chain and you'd l lose that you know local feel and the local caring of it so uh what they actually had uh, the attorney from kp law do was built built in a liquidated damages uh, clause into that in that particular case and i'll i'll see if katie will send me the uh the language that she came up with for that yeah, because I think we would incur lawyer fees if we had to sign another agreement and have our lawyer look at it. So I think we should just cover ourselves just because the place in Northampton is already sold. Well, and, and I think the other thing that this board should be, you know, somewhat concerned about is one of the things that I like about this particular individual corporation coming forward, it is, it is a local person. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th oh, yeah. I think you're going to see a greater deal of, you know, care and whatever of how this facility is done by having a local person operate right. it. Right. He's so, also an established, yeah. you know, business owner he's, in Northampton, yeah, so exactly. he's hopefully exactly. not going anywhere. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'd be some, somewhat concerned, too, is, okay, all of a sudden it becomes extremely successful and, you know, whether it's a national chain or somebody else wants to, you know, buy it out that doesn't have those local connections, mm -hmm. you know. What do you see as the disadvantages, anybody, of the um, not having a percentage and just going with a flat rate? I don't want to go with a flat rate. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm against going with a flat rate. I mean, I it, so, it sounds like the only reason they didn't want to have a percentage is they don't want to have what's in our current draft agreement from our lawyers that talks about having open books and an You're independent right. audit by our auditor and making sure that the 3% of gross sales is really 3% right. of gross sales, yeah. that we get our fair shake. So, to mm -hmm. me, our lawyer put in language that really is protecting the town, mm -hmm. which they seem to want to just mm. not adhere to, which, yeah. you know, I, I don't like the flat fee. Well, I think And I understand the reason for them wanting to do that. I mean, that's, that's well within their purview, but that's, yeah. we don't. Well, I, the point he's making is we don't ask that of other businesses, but it's not the same. It's not, which you clearly pointed out. And it's also not, I mean, again, we're still in the infancy of this, but it's also not what other host communities are doing either. Right. So I don't know right. why we need to break the mold. I mean, the and I guess what I kind of brought up to them is that, like, it's not that they, they're not unaware of what they're getting themselves into. Their expectation and the way that he's drawn up his business model should should be based on what already exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What already exists in these other towns and municipalities because to do otherwise would not be preparing well right. mm -hmm. for your business in terms of, like, you know, worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. which is what you would do when you're developing a business plan. So my, my sense of this is, is that he's, they or whoever's involved in this have prepared for the worst case scenario, which I, you know, I think is not necessarily, you know, I don't think that we're gouging in any way, but I think that the scenario that we've offered is in line with the other host agreements that are out there. And I think that that's very well what they've prepared for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're uh, making every attempt to uh, benefit as much as they can on the, on uh, the beginning of it. But I don't think that, our offer is going to deter them from moving forward, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if that so, makes sense. Yeah. Like so I, think I, they're, I think they're trying to maximize, and, and sure. I get that effort, but I don't so think that that's a deterrent. This is their first, their first offer. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. to negotiate. Yeah. Well, and I think, too, like we, as Matt's saying, with, with the knowledge of their business plan, I mean, they've obviously looked into what the market is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they know how big Southampton is. They've figured out whether there's going to be spillover from West Hampton, Westfield, or some other town. Coming people in here, far and, I was going to say, sure. this, but I didn't want to argue. Like and people go far and wide for this stuff. Yeah, and and for now at least. <laughs> but yeah. but I mean, so they've looked into that. They know the size of the facility they're trying to build. So they you know they they've got this factored in already. So it, it's still worthwhile enough. It's not deterring them from wanting to do it. So there's got to be something in there that is still going to hold them there. And I, I think you know I, I agree. It's their first negotiating position, but mm -hmm. I don't think we should feel like oh my God we've got to hurry up and. Yeah. Capitulate. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think we have to negotiate something that makes sense to us, and I, I certainly am in favor of some sort of separate fund 
for whatever we call it, education, counseling, whatever it may be. I think we've got, as you said, an opportunity both with Cooley Dick nearby now, the urgent care folks, and our two schools. Mm -hmm. and there's no reason we shouldn't be much more in line with providing those kinds of services. So everyone is in agreement that probably having a percentage, no, Northampton and East Hampton both at 3%. The only one that I've seen that's less than 3% is the Deerfield one. Um, and then for host agreements, I think East Hampton and Northampton had $10,000, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, both of them. So that's been pretty consistent between, I think, the three, the three places. Um, anybody else have any other feedback about? Um, no, I'm just thinking about what I read in the newspaper. I think the revenue for Northampton, I know we're not the size of Northampton, and this is not going to be located at any major intersection where it's going to bring people from all over. But I think not in less than a year, they've already, in the, you know, they've already received about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars just based on this three percent. I know we're not Northampton. I'm talking about Northampton. So uh, we're a fraction of that. I, that I understand. But would that fraction be substantially more than twenty thousand yeah, dollars? Of course it would. So I mean, that that becomes my my question then. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of if the town is entitled to, and I, and I understand your point about supporting local business and, and so forth, we don't want to discourage it, and this is another revenue stream, it's a lot of things. But it really needs a little, in my mind, and maybe because I was missed the last meeting and I was on vacation, need a little more information about, you know, others, uh, you know, how, how they've made out um, not just based on the agreement, but in reality, what are they getting for their payments? And do we have that information? Did you get that already? What do you mean, what are we getting for our payments? I mean, what, what, what their 3% represents. Oh. Like in East Hampton? Yeah. I, I, I'm the asking. Dollar amount? Yes. Okay. For me that, I think for there me was that something for, published recently about the East Hampton amount. That, that I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for me, though, the, 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 dollar, amount, the dollar amount doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter um, to me per se. It's more just in line with, you know, there's a state statute in place. It has limits, of course, and there's other agreements that are in place. So this starts to become, for me, an argument of precedence, basically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I get that we want to be supportive of local businesses, but I, I just have to keep revisiting the fact that business plans for these types of businesses are not, or any business for that matter, are not done on the back of an envelope over a beer in the middle of the night. Like, they're done by smart people that think things out, that have a plan, that are working a plan, that, and this is a long-term business proposition, and these costs are built in. And this is written into a state statute, so I don't view it as being gouging in any type of way, shape, or form. I view it as an expectation of the business. And so, like, while, you know, I, to a certain degree, I'm willing to, uh, I'm willing to accommodate the fact that, like, it is a benefit the, that this business is owned locally, and I think we should account for that because it could be any random person that's wanting to do this, and I think there is v intrinsic value to that, and so perhaps we should discuss that. But I, but at the end of the day, these costs are already built into the business, and I, I don't know is, is that we should be yielding uh, very much on this, especially since there's there's numerous precedents that indicates that um, other towns and municipalities are signing these types of agreements based on the state statute limits. Mm -hmm. Again, my opinion, but, um, you know. The sense I got was the percentage, the 3%, um, unless there's unusual circumstances, the impact to the town would be covered by a 3% fee. That's the sense that I got. I don't know if that's anything that you have heard before from other communities. But I know, Ed, you've felt that the 3% usually is, I mean, that, like he said, that the, the expenses that a town would incur would likely be covered by a 3%. I think it more than, more than would that, yeah. cover it. Because yeah. it, once you subtract out the detail work, which they have to pay for yeah. directly, you know, especially as more and more shops open up, I mean, the direct cost of, you know, the police department maybe scheduling drive-bys, you know, when the place is closed to see if the lights are going off or if there's any un unusual activity or, you know, fire department calls or what have you, um, or wear and tear on the road. And I don't see them really being 
all that high. Do you have concerns at all? Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah. Like, if anything, those details, officers, yeah. and then they pay the Yeah. 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 Mm. Mm. You know, we a little while ago we got a uh, map of Southampton and it indicated uh, where how many accidents that happened within a certain period of time. Is that area right? Big Y, Red Rock. Is that a high accident area? No. No. Okay. And if the detail work was going to be done by the uh, police, that would be um, that would be on College Highway as opposed to in the parking lot. It would depend on the needs. Okay. It would depend on the needs. Perhaps if it's really busy, perhaps they need somebody there to make sure that the lines stay out of yeah. traffic in the parking lot, but then also people exiting and entering. Right okay. And I think there's enough shops now that I don't anticipate people having to cross Route 10. Do you? Or would you? Yeah, I don't think so. And it's a pretty big parking lot. Considering East Hampton, yeah, somewhat of a similar, you know, location. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the fact that it would be across from Big Y would actually help the business, frankly. Mm -hmm. I think it would help it a lot, so it might even be. <laughs> <laughs> it might help, might help Mikel's coffee, too. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> it might help Mikel's coffee, too, as they're standing in line, right? Oh, absolutely. I think it's going to help a lot. <laughs> well, Mikel's has great bakery yeah, okay. items, actually. You guys seem very adamant about the education of the piece. What is Northampton and East Hampton doing with that? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we have to, I think, spend okay, a little Okay, you haven't time. seen anything on that. That's something that you guys Yeah, up. I was actually going to contact the um, health coordinator at the high school, who actually is the health coordinator for the district. You know, there's so many materials available from, like, DPH that are pretty much free. I mean, I don't even imagine it would be a lot of uh, money. But I just think we have this new place right across the street. We have the Nora School not far and the Quest Hampshire Regional. It just seems like... With a new shop opening up, uh, it's an opportunity to be able to get some funds to be able to offer funds to the these three locations to just do a little bit of education. Mm -hmm. it, it's a concentrated group of people that would be helpful, I would think. Which, from the, you know, I think is very important. The education piece, not not for the marijuana shops, but for it, it wouldn't just serve people with those. It would no, serve course, the other drugs. opioid addicted. Yeah, I mean, right. the yeah. education that, that might prevent that going forward, I mm -hmm. think, is yeah. really but important. That's what, one of the things we would look into, Tammy. Thanks. Uh, not only just want to talk to Chief Recovery uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, our recovery. Our recovery network, we were yep. funded by a grant um, through SAMHSA, but it's, it's a, a grant that's provided for the Hampshire County, who would have married for the Oh, yeah. Health right. She'd be a good resource to Right. Out. She's my next door neighbor. I know that the, uh, the grant resources are slowly diminishing. Right. And then also, um, was it Hope? Hampshire Hope? And that they're all part of that collaborative. So that would be, I'm, I'm happy to reach out to them and just talk to them a little bit to see. Uh, but I think that um, I'm, I would personally be in favor of um, having some percentage, uh, whether it be two, two and a half, or three, and then also having a fee not necessarily $10,000, but one that would cover for some education. And then asking our attorney to look into what would the charges be if we had to renegotiate a host agreement and, and involve them, what, what fees would we incur so that we wouldn't just have to cover that separately. I just have a question on the education. Are you, is your uh, department responsible for the DARE and the whatever uh, drug abuse education? The program is supported by the South Hampton PTO. Okay. Um, so it's, it's not budgeted, and mm -hmm. they annually have been supportive of it. You know, at some point those funds may dry up. I, I don't know what the school may decide not to continue the program. It's not just specifically on drugs anymore. It's based on poor decision making. Right, right, right. That, you know, so they transition to the whole data. It's not going to say that anymore. Mm -hmm. We can look into Hampshire Regional too, because if they have, you know, uh, students against destructive decisions, and if there are some groups that, you know, have to have, you know, various fundraisers to get some money to do some education, it would be an opportunity to find out what's currently there, 
and support them in some way with the, the one-time fee. I mean, how do you think that our community is doing compared to other police forces that, I mean, I'm sure you're in touch with other uh, chiefs and other areas in this area, just like other communities. So like, I mean, you, you, and I, and I realize that you're, that you're new at this, but um, I imagine that like, you, you know, you're in contact with other chiefs and other communities yes. and you know what, perhaps you know what other communities are doing uh, to, to, to curtail drug you, abuse you, and education. Oh, so you're talking else. about use of Narcan, like yeah, things yeah, like well, that. Everything like the opioid crisis, which is, which is a huge thing. Um, a huge thing now, and I guess I guess where I'm going with this, just to, to sum it up, is I get that the PTO is funding that now, but I guess the perspective that I'd like to know or have is how do you think that we're doing uh, in comparison to other communities around us with our education on, you know, destructive decision making, uh, drug abuse education, addiction services, um, knowing what to look for on the signs. Like, are, are we doing enough, or are we just trying to fit a very small budget that the PTO offers? I can just speak. We're doing a good job. You know, sure. As far as the police department goes, yeah, through that the DART program, that's what they call it, and um, the DART program's funded by a grant um, that is um, through SAMHSA. And we get $5,000 a year, but slowly next year they're going to cut it down by 20% um, yeah. from what I've been told. So what happens in our case is if we encounter anybody or we become aware of anybody that has a substance abuse uh, addiction, whether it's alcohol um, or an opioid, we actually try to reach out to them. We provide them with um, uh, counselors if they're willing to, to um, get. Uh, we actually will bring them to... Um, uh, like for instance, any any place that they need to go to get their services, um, it's paid through for that grant. So we're actually doing what Southampton's doing, what most departments in the county are, are as well. Um, I don't know if uh, they a lot of schools that, have. Do you consider that a bare minimum, or do you think we could do better? I guess what I'm asking is, it, none of this is an accusation, right? It's like we we only have a limited amount of funds, we have a limited sure. amount of grants, right? And 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 I'm sure I'm quite confident that you're maximizing all of that. But what I really am getting at is, are those funds and are those grants a small figure compared to what other communities are doing? Maybe they're budgeting. No, I, I, I don't think so. Um, I think based on our needs and based on the needs of trying to do a good job in this category. Do, do you know? I think I know. I, I think that they're they're adequate for. Okay. I do. Um, again, uh, you know, Southampton is a is a smaller community. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're educating them at the at the elementary school level. And then we're also assisting with recovery outside of school. And I, we have an assigned school resource officer, Officer Gove, who works with the students and also those. Um, and I know the high school proactively has uh, programs to you know, combat this. Okay. You also were in on the grant that I think Northampton got to provide Narcan yes. and all the. Yes, yeah. Um, we, all our officers are, we, we carry Narcan. We actually provide it. To, is that um, also available at the school? Do you know if it's in the uh, I nurse's office? the school, office? Do, they, they do have it now. I'm pretty sure they do. At, at Hampshire Regional. Yeah. Hampshire Regional, yes. Yes. That's great. Did, it, yeah, did no, I answer it? I want to make sure that, you know, that there's obviously a crisis out there. It's getting worse, not better. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think that education and starting early is, is the way to, is, is one of the ways to curtail this. And I just want to make sure that you feel like you're not under-resourced in that area. Because I don't. Because this is an opportunity I don't. to boost up those resources. Right, I don't. If more resources would should they, help. Should the grants no longer be provided? Well, then maybe so, because it is important to send people, then it, you know, it is important. To, we actually have two cell phones that um, this grant pays for as well for our, 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 our DART officers, which are basically the recovery officers, and they're trained specifically in this. And we give those numbers to people that they can call them and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm low on Narcan, or yeah. um, I, need, uh, I need a ride. I need a ride. I want to get clean. I need a ride, and the officers will actually bring them to um, anywhere they, they need to go, yeah. wherever they can get a bed. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are That's good to we're hear. proactive. That's good. Very good. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah. So this is all important stuff. Yeah, it is important. So I'm going to reach out to a, a couple of people between now and next time, and people can read over the um, other the other host agreements. And you're going to be in correspondence with Attorney Evans. Yeah, and I'll see what I can find out if, from any other host agreements that I can find out there. And, yeah. And and in comparison. And can you also talk to um, KP Law also? I mean, we're sticking with our host agreement, right? 
I mean, I would probably recommend sticking with our host agreement if you wanted to make at least start with that base and then if you wanted to t entertain some amendments mm -hmm. to our own host agreement. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. we, could, we could always do that. Does anybody else have anything else you want to talk about this? Are other people in general agreement with a percentage as well as a fee without being mm -hmm. overly aggressive? Yeah, to I don't want to be overly aggressive, but yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's right and then um, looking into what would it cost if we had to uh, incur legal fees for a, a transfer of ownership? Mm -hmm. Would there be other fees involved in that or primarily just legal fees? I would think basically legal fees, but I can find out. Okay. But, but there were auditing fees that they were supposed to pay for you know, an annual review of their records to just document their earnings and things, and that's paid for by the company as well. They would provide that yes. audit to us, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not something we'd have to pay right. for for somebody to go audit their books. Mm -hmm. no. Right. People okay with just reading up and sure. coming prepared next time to um, move this forward, hopefully? Sure. Yeah. Great. Sure. Anything else, Ed, on that? No, I think you've done a good job of venting that. Thank you. Okay, so the next thing is a select board to authorize um, <clears throat> FRCOG to contract Southampton Highway for regional bids such as road salts. I think we got a copy of that in our packet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is, we, Town of Southampton Highway Department had previously used the Hampshire Council of Governments to uh, do some cooperative bidding. Uh, now that the Hampshire Co Co Council of Governments is going out of business, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, FERCOG, is mm -hmm. picking up that end so that they are looking for um, our authorization to do that on our behalf. And then the first one they're doing is uh, the road salt bid, which we utilize every year. Mm -hmm. So we need a motion? Yep. Please. Well, I move to, uh, I move to authorize uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments to contract for Southampton Highway for regional bids on road salt. Mm -hmm. Or should I just say on regional bids? On regional bids. Regional yeah. bids. Yes. Yeah. I'll second that. Um, discussion? What other things would be in this? Just out of curiosity, and should we define that? I mean, road salt is one of them, surely, but what are the others? I just can't think. They've actually, uh, and I don't know how much of it for cargo pick up, but um, I was impressed that um, Hampshire County Gov 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 yeah, Council of Governments actually did bids for uh, asphalt road work uh, type, type, type of things uh, that we uh, have utilized. Um, God. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, but off the, they probably will do. Uh, sand in addition to salt they probably will do um, the different grades of um, rock and gravel um, those type of uh, okay. type of things okay. it says here we'll open road salt bids on august 27th and we'll be asking for your award information by the middle of september <clears throat> a little later we'll be we will run the liquid calc chloride magnesium chloride bids yeah. what's that for Liquid calcium chloride uh, is a pretreatment. Yeah, it's a, it, they use it for pretreatment. It's a derivative, uh, same type of derivative, but different product than uh, rock salt is. Works at lower temperatures, um, but and, and is used, like I say, comes in liquid format. So uh, everything they have listed here is for uh, uh, basically w winter road treatments. Okay, and this is obviously so that we can join and get lower rates, yes. cooperative agreements. Okay, now, is this a contract only for one year? What they go, what they go out to bid for is yeah, just for that so upcoming year. So each year, year. we have to go. Okay. Did you get the um, motion and second? Yes, motion by Matt, second by Francine. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, any other discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. For nothing unanimous, thank you. Uh, next is the approval of the Water Department Scott. Agreement with Comprehensive Scott. Environmental Incorporated for services for the DWSRF 4396, Southampton Water System Improvements and notice to proceed, notice proceed. With the contract for the actual work, yes. Yeah. So there's two pieces. One is uh, the authorization for um, CEI, who is the engineering firm for their uh, in engineering work and contract oversight uh, during the actual construction of the pumping station and the well uh, re rehabilitation. And the second part is the authorization for the contract of signing the notice to actually proceed with the construction. <coughs> and we had previously signed, signed off on this anyway, right? Uh, different contract? different portions of it along the way. Like I say, these are, are two that um, actually arise out of actually moving on to the construction phase. Mm -hmm. So I would need a, a motion for both of these, one to uh, enter into the uh, agreement with CEI for uh, the con construction phase of their engineering services. Um, and then the second would, a portion of that would be to um, auth authorize and sign the notice to proceed uh, with Bay State Regional Contractors, Inc. Um, <coughs> for the construction phase, which is tentatively scheduled to begin September 3rd. Mm -hmm. So moved. Wow. So I don't have that written down in front of me, and you, you seem to have that. Uh, yeah, and that works, so. Second, anyone? Actually, I have a question, but I'll wait. Uh, actually, yeah, it's better to do a second, and then there's discussion. Yeah. So do you want to second it? OK, I'll second it. OK, <laughs> for discussion. Right. Uh, just a question, actually, on the, on the contract under the assumptions paragraph here. Mm -hmm. I just talked about services of a field resident will be provided on a periodic basis up to 80 hours as required. 180, 180 hours. hours. I'm sorry, 180 hours. Yeah. I'm sorry, yes, 180 hours. Um, and then it would be, assuming that it would be a half a day each. So that's about basically up to 45 man days. I just didn't know if there should be any kind of a minimum in there. I mean, you know, the up two figures always kind of scare me when it says up to so many. And, you know, you could get away with up to 20 20 hours or 40 hours and, and not do all the supervision that might be required. So I was just curious as to whether that was. Well, the downside to the low, lower number is that once you hit that number, <clears throat> now you're paying a contract fee <clears throat> if, when you exceed it. So what they're saying here is this contract uh, contains basically up to 180 hours of this. Mm -hmm. And if you don't hit it, you basically aren't paying for it. Does this, this right, but how do we know that they do that, I guess is my question. Ba basically, they bill on their services to the water department by uh, the particular contracted work. Okay. Do they ordinarily, based on their three locations, does this, this 180, does that include travel time or, uh, or does travel time apply to this 180 hours, I guess is my question. I would imagine it would. I would imagine it would too. They usually do. And that's six hours each trip. <laughs> so just to be clear, what we're actually addressing is the Comprehensive Environmental Inc. CEI is pleased to submit this proposed scope, schedule, and proposed fee for professional consulting services for construction-related services associated with the construction of a water booster pump station. So this is for the East Hampton interconnection for our water mm -hmm. and a treatment building at the Glendale Well mm -hmm. and elect uh, electrical instrumentation installations at the storage tank. So we're basically uh, con uh, contracting with this particular company to provide that service. And they had bid this. So are there any other questions about this contract? And I'm assuming this doesn't, be, this isn't signed by the water commissioners, it's just signed by us, but I'm assuming they've reviewed them, right? Yes, they have. Okay. Yeah, it was Tom Gone that actually uh, uh, brought this uh, 
to me and made, made sure that I was aware of it and that it would make it to the select board's uh, agenda to be signed. And I'm assuming he feels great about it? They all, they all do, yeah. They're, they're looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd feel better if it said accepted by the select board as opposed to board of selectmen since that's our official name now. But um, other than that, I'm okay with this if everybody else is. We have a motion and second. Are you ready to vote on this? We have a motion and second. Yep. Any other questions, concerns? No? Uh, no. I, you know. Did you want some more information about anything? No, no. I just, uh, I guess I've seen, it, not necessarily here, but in, in other situations I've been in where when you have that that language is less than specific maybe in terms of a minimum requirement that those that are not really serious about their job shall we say get away with not doing the adequate supervision that they're supposed to do mm -hmm. and so then you end up with a mess and it's like well where was the supervision that was there it's like well the contract said up to 180 hours it didn't say we had to do 180 hours so I, I've just seen wiggle room be abused in other places that I've had these situations so I'm, I'm just raising a good concern but if everybody's in general thinking that this is not a big issue then I'm, I'm fine with it and, do you want to propose that we change it where it says 180 hours I don't know. I, I don't know what's And, and what normal. about asking for deliverables based on, on those 180 hours if they reported in every two months or so and gave us a report of what they did, what they found? I mean, does that make That's them, you think, any more accountable to us? And as you're saying... They have to do, that, they have to do that anyway when they bill, it, bill us. Okay. Yeah. Then, okay. So there. just to... That's the follow-up question here, Ed. You, you seem to suggest prior that if we put in a minimum, then we're obligated to that minimum. But if we don't, and they don't bill us 180 hours, that, that assumes that we're going to get refunded a certain amount. Or right. That we're not going to pay if, a certain If it's amount. 120 hours, we're going to get billed for 120 Does this whole thing cost $1.7 mm -hmm. So meaning that that includes up to 180 hours, but if they do say 10 hours, then it's not gonna cost us 1.7 million, it's gonna cost us something. Well, no, the 1.7 1, 1, 1. 1. 1. million is the actual construction. No, they're charging us 159,000. Oh, this is 159,000, yeah, for the, the CEI service. Okay, got, yeah, okay, I got, I see that. Yeah. So it'll be less than 159,000. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I, it would be nice to have some reporting, but if you're if you're comfortable with the fact that the way they would be billing their services would outline what they've actually done well, or the time spent, then yeah, that's they fine. Should, they yeah. should bill us pe bill us periodically and by task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. with an accounting. That's fine. Right. Okay, ready to vote then? Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next item is bylaws, advisory committee, make up and charge discussion. So I don't know, Francine, uh, um, would you like to discuss this or and or? Um, I, I had left it on here, what I would like to do and I didn't get a chance for this meeting, I will for the next is uh, actually develop a draft, uh, shall we say, charge terms and put in it some different choices that you can pick from. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought the, the version that you gave to Chris and she handed out, even though the committee hasn't had a chance to discuss it, had some really good points and, and gave some direction and parameters that, to my recollection, <laughs> we were never true. provided as the bylaw committee. So this would be a useful document yeah. for us. Terms, I mean, everything in here. And it was the town of Beckett, right? Would be very example. useful from the town of Beckett. Yeah. yeah, would be very useful for us. So yeah. um, we'd like to just contribute yeah, and, to and, this. And, and scribbling yeah. in somewhere. Just it's time. So twice. I think if we could, you work your version and the bylaw committee, uh, reflecting some of the things that we've already done, <laughs> need to be incorporated. I think in this, the and then going forward, then we have something we can work with, <laughs> so that. It's it's uh, something that's permanent and, and living for the town. On that one. Virginia Ahart, 27 Fulmer Road, the only remaining original member of the bylaw committee. This goes back to when uh, Heather was here, when she asked a couple of us if we would go over them. 
And thus began an ad hoc committee that has lived on, now when I said Heather, uh, it was during her early part of being here, so that gives you an idea of how many years. <clears throat> we never had a formal charge. We never had, until recently, a formal committee. People came and they went. <laughs> so it's been worked on by probably at least seven or eight other people over the, the years. Um, it would be good to have a formal charge. Um, simply to say, look at them, bring them up to speed with language, um, tell us what's missing, get them in order. It was sort of like that. <clears throat> and that's kind of, I think, what we've worked on forever since then. Some people had really grandiose ideas <clears throat> about reforming the whole format and coming up with other things. Um, other people just kind of wanted to get them done <laughs> and get rid of some of the strange language that we have in them. Um, so it really would be good because I'd like to get this one last thing. Mm -hmm. I feel sort of committed to it at this point, to That's see wonderful. it through. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it really has been, I don't know how many years that we've been meeting and working on this. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the committee's done a great job, too. Mm -hmm. I know any time that we've looked at uh, revised bylaws, it's such a great job. It's taken a lot of complicated, unnecessarily complicated language and just made it so much better. So I appreciate all that, and I can appreciate your wanting to like finish the task, too. So we'll wait then for more information once the bylaws committee gets a chance to review the materials from Ed and yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, because a couple of people weren't there last time, so we actually have to get that circulated to everybody. OK. Ed, anything else you want to say about that? Uh, no, but, and the other thing I'm ho hoping to actually have come out of this is just have a template to develop committee charges yeah. and whatever in the future that you can just kind of plug in what the committee is, how many members, mm -hmm. what you want for terms, if you want it to be re you know, non-residents, residents. I've even seen s some of them as specific as registered voter of the, you know, oh, yeah. of, of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the select board in the future could just, uh, you know, use that for a, a, a new committee that came along or what mm -hmm. have you. Terms would be very helpful too. Was that? Terms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah ter terms is always good. Mm -hmm. Not a lifetime appointment, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds like a good plan. Next is Willie E. Norris Elementary School request to use funding for additional sidewalk repairs. So it looks great. The uh, repairs, um, again, that was uh, voted on by the town to do a number of repairs at Norris and the sidewalk, uh, they repaired um, large sections of it and it came under budget. Uh, so they're requesting to do a little bit more uh, the remaining areas that were needed and they need uh, a vote from us to do that. And I know from, uh, it's actually not um, CPC, it's actually town money. And it sounds like it's basically exactly the, what the money was earmarked for. So they're just looking to increase the scope. Yeah, and I'll see if I can throw this up on the projector. It's not exactly what I wanted to do. I was going to do a little deeper with more PowerPoint with more photos, but since I took the photos on my phone and my yeah. photo app is not cooperating, <laughs> I will do it on the sh short. Uh, if you also want to text them to me, I can do it too. I think this had come up one, one other time in an earlier meeting and we were wondering why they hadn't thought about 
the bigger ask at the time? Well, no, so, they, so, so I can speak to this. So they did, um, however, there, there's a lot of, it's the same, the, the explanation is the same as the doors. So what, you know, there's a lot of doors at Norris that have problems and we obviously authorized to fix a lot, to replace some of them, to fix some of them, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not the full ask. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, the full ask would be a lot more money. And so I think that what I think our custodian is doing a good job of is putting these things out to bid. Um, he's getting good work being done. And at the end of the day, what he's coming back to is, is like, hey, look, like here are the pictures, here are the photos. Ed's going to show them. Mm -hmm. Like this wasn't initially in scope, but just so you know, like this is something that we're going to be asking for in a couple of years. So okay. I think from, from my standpoint, especially if we have the, the, the evidence for this and we have the proof of it, um, I think it's something that's that's fiscally responsible for us to do now, and it also prevents, um, you know, um, public thought from being like, okay, when when we ask for this again in a couple of years, are that are we going to be getting the questions of, so is this the new stuff that's cracking, or is this the old stuff that's right. cracking, and why didn't you just do it right the first time? Right. And I think this gives us the opportunity to do it right the first time with the same amount of money that was already previously authorized. Yeah, and basically what they had done, uh, they had reached out to a company and said, how would you go about repairing this and what would be a budgetary cost? And that's what they utilized. And they had, the company that they had, that had given them the estimate said, okay, um, we're gonna go in, we will cut out the cracked areas, which is better than just gouging them out and filling them, and we'll take it all the way down to the base, and then we'll just, you know, if we cut out a four-inch piece, we'll fill the four-inch piece. Uh, when they went out and got quotes, um, it was a different company. It was a different company that was the low quoter, and it was Adams and Bruxton. They said, you know, it's actually going to be cheaper for us just to rip out these, and I don't know if they're four foot sections, or five, I'm gonna call them four foot sections, they might be five, uh, to actually, where it's cracked, take out the whole section, take it down to the ground, you know, put, it, put in the, the, the metal rebar at the, at the bottom, and- New expansion uh, joints. And yeah, new expansion way. joints, and replace it that way. And the quote they came back with, with this repair, which to me is a better repair and longer lasting, was less expensive than the budgetary quote. Right. So mm -hmm. what you're looking at here is the section in front of the flagpole, and you'll probably see one, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten. You can probably see about 12 uh, squares there that they removed, put the rebar, uh, the metal uh, grating rebar down, and fill, filled in again. So this has already been repaired. Now, I will go back and This is a section that was previously repaired. And, and what they had, oh great, what happened? There it is, okay, there sorry. We gotta leave the cursor on the picture. Uh, and that's how all the previous repairs were. Repairs were. were. Those who haven't been to the school. Yeah. This, is, this is what, if Ed showed a picture of the, f of mm -hmm. the before of the fix, uh -huh. that's what they all look like, except that all of those filled in areas that, that uh, haven't cracked yet, they were all just cracked and, uh, and dusted, pretty much. I yep. mean, they were. Right. And, and what the, the areas that they originally planned to do, which have now been done, uh, were the ones that were trip hazards, insurance hazards. Mm -hmm. So. There's, I think, I don't know, I think there's about $8,000 left in what was authorized. Okay. And the company said, you know, those sections like this that, and I don't know how long ago they were repaired, uh, but these are the ones that they just basically had gouged out and filled in, they're starting to crack again. So okay. while they might not- A couple not, more seasons left. They might have one, they might have two, but as the, as you know, especially as the water gets in it over the winter time, the you know expansion contraction. These are going to be back to insurance risks also. So uh, they're saying companies willing to come back and do these. I think it's for seven thousand dollars. You know, can we have them do that? And I said, okay. There's two pieces of the puzzle. One's procurement, which I can handle. The other is really should get permission from the select board and the capital committee. So I'll send the same information to the capital committee and ask them to meet. Uh, that was two. Here's three. Are you still liaison on the capital, Matt? Yep. And with it, uh, here we go. It's gonna it's gonna come in. Uh, just okay. give it a second. 
I don't know why it decides to time out of your desktop, but it's gonna it's gonna come in right now. Yeah. yeah. And again, <laughs> you can you can see where it's kind of lighter there, like that one up there. This was an area that was repaired before, and now that started to crack out, and you can see you know the weeds and stuff coming up through it. So again, that's gonna get worse, and it's gonna become a trip hazard, whether that's in a year or two from now. So to me, it these make sense to hey. Uh, Let's get them now. And we're not sending the message that we're doing projects over and over and over right. again, mm -hmm. which, you know, exactly. people will. Yeah. And, here's, and you'll see this one comes up again, and you're going to see the same thing. You're going to see the lighter areas where this was repaired, whether it was two or three years ago or four years ago. I don't know how long ago. Uh, but that area that's repaired is now starting to yeah. crack out, and it's going to get worse. Um, so. Yeah. Are all these areas on the um, school side? In other words, it's all in that uh, area, the entrance to the school where the flagpole is? These are, there was one area that was out back that uh, Tom Lavelli had told me about. I think he said it was by the art room that yeah, uh, they had, really that yeah. has been already been done. It's already, been, okay, good. Good. That's great. It, it looks, it looks much idea. better. Yeah, that's great. So it, it gives you a little better idea of what has been done, how they've done it, and specifically what they're looking to use the money that uh, hasn't been spent yet for. And like I say, and, and, and it was helpful for me to go actually go out there and see it and have time show, show it to yeah. me. To me, it makes perfect sense. But. Mm -hmm. I think it does too. It would also be great if they could do it before school starts. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, this portion probably, unless the principal says this won't be dangerous to the students if they do it while school's in session, mm -hmm. uh, it probably will wait to be done over a vacation, uh, okay. vacation time. But. Uh, okay. Any other questions about? Would you like to make a motion then to authorize the um, additional funds to go towards similar repairs? I yeah. Move. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Okay. Who made the motion? Francine and Chris seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Ed, you're going to send that to uh, Charlie, Charlie and yeah, and have them get a meeting together and. Okay. Take a look at it and discuss it and hopefully vote on it. Good. Well, I think it's great that all these things are getting fixed from the roof to the chimney to the sidewalk, especially the school. I mean, these little kids are running around there all the time. And I, uh, and I also think it's, some, it's great to have somebody like Tom Labelli there doing over, over, overlooking the, this stuff. And, yeah, uh, yeah actually, we're really fortunate. Keep, keeping an eye out for the school's best interest and the town's best yeah. interest yeah. also. Yeah, he's excellent. He's really good. Yep. Next is town, administra town administrator evaluation. So I have sent, I'm following the procedure of the PQB. Um, I sent out to all the other select board members a copy of the evaluation for Ed and also uh, feedback that I received um, on Ed's evaluation, and I've asked that people score it and get it back to me by the 20th of August. And then at the first September meeting, in open session, we'll review the evaluation. So any questions about the process? Is uh, August 20th given people enough time? Yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, great, then that's the plan. Next is the William E. Norris School Committee. The, there's a joint meeting that's been requested for the appointment of a new school committee member and discussion. So the school committee is having a meeting on the 19th of August, yeah. which is a Monday, and they're asking, first of all, whose who's, um, spot is open? It was just a non-vote. It was just an open from the election. Open seat from the election. Okay, Wh whose term was up, do you know? Yeah. Oh, yes, okay. Okay, so uh, there is somebody who has been is interested, and Ed clarified the process that it should be an endorsement by both the local school committee and the select board in a joint meeting. So I know that the date was thrown out there, and um, I didn't hear back from everybody, but 
Who can attend? I know I cannot. I cannot either. I'm on vacation that week for the same, okay. so I can't make, that's why I can't make the select board meeting the following day. Okay. And I was hopeful that, um, I know that at their 19th meeting, they are realigning of the board and yeah, assigning new positions, so it would be nice if that could happen before then, but if we don't have a quorum of people that could make the 19th, then we'll have to come up with another plan and maybe. I mean, when, you're not allowed to call in? Ed? No. Are you not? Are you not? I don't know. I'm just asking. Well, you I'm happy to do that. I'm. Yeah. I'm not if, out of the country. If, if you got a quorum, then you can call in. If you don't, you can't call in, and then and make you the make quorum. the quorum. Oh, got it. Okay. I don't know about John's availability, but I do believe he'll be at the next meeting. I don't know if he could come on the 19th. I don't think he um, indicated. What about you? I can be available on the 19th. Yeah. yeah. I have. I have a conflict that night, but so. I don't know if I need to be there or not. Okay. I don't think you do. Hmm? I don't think he needs to be there, does he? No, so long as there's a minute taker. And Kathy, Kathy does the local one. She does the board. She, she does, does the, the local, too. so hopefully yeah. she would be able to do that. And that would be the only agenda item, correct? For the joint meeting. For the joint meeting. That, yeah, that would be my You just have to assign someone to run the meeting because with Matt being vice chair also, I guess it would be so clerk. So you're not going to be there either. I cannot make it on the 19th. So okay. we have to just confirm that John is able to make it. And if it is, then there's a quorum. And then okay. uh, we would just need to have um, probably you as clerk be the okay. representative. Or so, John. Yeah. Or John is, um, yep, that's all. Okay with that. Okay. So I've got a, another interesting question for you then. <laughs> Since the chair and the vice chair of the select board are not going to be in attendance that evening, mm -hmm. who is going to be the chair and run the select board portion mm -hmm. of that? That's what I um, just raised, and I um, asked whether or not Francine being clerk would be the logical next person, and she said, or John. So <laughs> I would say... Yeah, I'll, I mean, if the default, you know, goes to the clerk, then I'll do it. I, okay. I, I can, I'll, I'll find out um, okay. if there's okay. any logical progression. Okay, if there's a protocol that has to yeah. be followed. And then, yeah. um, do you want me to email John and see if he's able to attend the meeting? Oh, I can, and I'll okay. CC you. You'd, you'd, be, you'd be posting it anyway, so if you want, you don't mind doing that. No, that's yep. fine. And if not, if John we have a... Make it, then we can't do it. Then we talk about it the 20th, mm -hmm. about how we're going to reschedule a joint meeting. Okay. 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 Yep. Sounds, Sounds good. good. And like I said, there is um, somebody that there that's been somewhat nominated or a step forward that is interested. All right. The next item is that there's been correspondence from the emergency management director, who's Charlie Konecki, letter regarding making the emergency management director position a stipend position. Did everybody get a chance to see that letter? Yes. Um, can you speak at all, or Ed, do you know the history of this? Has it ever been a stipend position? Here in Southampton? Mm. I am not aware. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I can do some history checking on that, but. Yeah, I uh, don't believe, uh, before uh, Charlie, it was Don Snyder. Yes. And I don't believe that there was a stipend. I think that it was a. Um, constant source of frustration for Don in terms of not being having resources to do any kind of drills or you know that it was a step up in the obligations of a uh, an a, a appointment to then expect that it's going to be run completely free so do does anybody have any well, uh, other than this? to repeat what Rini said because I I talked to him on a, a couple of occasions, Don, and I know that was the reason why he didn't want to continue in the position, mm -hmm. um, just because he had he had no resources to do anything. Mm -hmm. And the expectations, and unfortunately with the environment we're living in, the expectations for emergency management are increasing Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. in terms of plans and so forth. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. um, Just a question: Are there are there emergency management type meetings and and trainings that he has to attend? That maybe, yes, you know, this would oh, reimburse absolutely. costs and so forth for that. That's what absolutely. this would be. Absolutely, and there's a lot of online trainings and updates, and mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you get the emergency, you get the um, 
all the emails whenever there's any event anywhere in the yes. state. I mean, there's a <laughs> lot. There's yeah. a huge amount of communication. Yeah. Um, situational awareness. I mean, I get emails yeah, constantly. Yep. Yeah. The Cape when they had the tornado, the windstorm. Right. Um, so there's an awful lot. And I mentioned that last time I met with Charlie, we went over to the police station. He showed me some of the... Um, the situation room, so to speak, where they have maps and uh, sort of control central. They did uh, convene there, a number of people, when they had the windstorm in town. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm impre I was very impressed by the um, equipment and also the, um, you know, the attention to this, because I feel that in this environment with climate change and weather and the awful news about, you know, active shooter and things like that, that, you know, it's money well spent, is my opinion. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea of how many hours a month he might spend on this? I mean, no, I think that, can idea? we invite him to the next meeting? Um, I mean, I, mm -hmm. he didn't propose any kind of amount. I don't know what the history is. I'd like mm -hmm. to know what... Um, well, he's asking that we turn it over to PQB, right? Pardon me? He's asking that we turn it over to the personnel board to, to establish, isn't... No, well, we, we don't know where the money's coming from. Yeah, right. right. I mean, yeah, right. there's a few steps before we right. end up doing that, yeah. Right. yeah. But I mean, I'd like to just get an idea of you know what what's the level of effort or what's the hours that he's putting in. I mean, just mm -hmm. out of curiosity, because I don't know how you can establish a site bin fairly unless right. you Without know having some kind of an idea of the hours, you know, what the time and, is involved. Yep. Yeah. So maybe have him come to the next meeting. Yeah. So. Do you think that would be the next step, or do you think it would be um, having him go in front of the PQB? It's a stipe, you're talking about a stipend position and not a, an hourly position. So my own personal opinion is I don't even think it has to go in front of the PPB. Yeah. Um, number one. Uh, you know, num number two is, yeah, invite him to the next meeting just to get an idea of what, you know, the monthly commitments and hours are. But, uh, yeah, every year that goes by, there is more and more that's rolled into the emergency management director and to expect uh, a volunteer to do it for nothing is, you know, ex extremely rare. I mean, yeah. You're either, either seeing it being a stipend position or, you know, the other next uh, transgression uh, would be in communities that have full-time police and or fire chiefs of actually having those duties uh, assigned to one of those. But you know, like I say, to expect someone to hold that position and not get paid um, in today's world is uh, extre extremely, extremely rare. Like I say, the demands are just uh, growing and growing and growing. There's, there's monthly, there's monthly not monthly, but quarterly meetings um, at the MEMA headquarters. There's usually uh, some type of re regional meeting that might be done, um, you know, quarterly. Also, there are, you know, trainings that you have to every so often, you know, retake them. And then there are all these, shall we say, drills uh, yep. and stuff that you, you know, ha have to attend. And it's it's getting, you know, more and more that it crosses into a number of different fields. Absolutely, and I think having regular meetings with um, school personnel and police fire, I think mm. that, you know, communication piece and having everybody, you know, understanding protocols, I think that takes a lot of time and effort to convene those, and if you're the point person, I think that, I think that's gonna be key to dealing with any kind of mm. issue that we have in town. Mm. I mean, I, I'm even surprised over the last couple of years that, you know, how many grants, like the hazard mitigation grants oh, and yes. stuff like that, are yes. really assigned to come through the emergency management? Right, to, right. You and know, you know, director. we're talking yeah. at the open space um, meeting about applying for the municipal vulnerability preparedness grant, and that mm. would, that would be something that really should come out of emergency planning. Hmm. Yep. Right. How many other positions in town are stipend positions? Is like the tree warden, any of the inspectors, you know, plumbing, electric, electrical, they're all paid on revolving accounts from fees, but the tree warden's is a stipend, right? I know animal inspector is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about the tree warden. I'll have to look into that one and double check on it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's a flat rate. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I don't remember that one specifically. So, yeah, there, there's a few of them. And have they gone? I don't believe they've gone in front of PQB for this. I don't yeah. think so. Okay. All right. So I would think maybe just inviting them into the next meeting. We'll put it on the agenda and um, get an idea of the hours. You know, Charlie's pretty connected with a lot of other communities too. I'm sure would be able to tell us. You know what communities you know the time involvement and, and some comparison and the responsibilities too yeah, right sure all right I think there's general support for that uh, next is um, Hampshire power transfer of ownership of electrical supply contracts to Sunwave, Sunwave gas, and gas and power. Yeah, this is the whole Hampshire Council of Governments, the dissolving of all the different responsibilities that they held. And, yeah, and I it, don't, you had said you don't believe we, there's anything that needs to be signed? No, Holly, if, if you vote to accept this, uh, basically all I have to do is send them an email okay. saying, yeah, uh, please transfer it over. Yeah, so the, basically the rates are the same and everything right. is the same. They're just assuming just, the oversight. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, personally, I think we're better off assigning it over rather than letting it elapse and not have a discounted rate and having to go through that uh, whole process again under the gun rather than right. let, let the terms of the agreements expire and before they expire, right. take a look at the options. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there any, are there any questions about that? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other necessary business that can't wait until the August 20th regular vote? Are you going to vote? Are you a motion and vote on that? Okay. Oh, I thought you said we didn't have to. No, if, you, if you'd you vote on it, you do, we just don't have to sign. Okay. I, okay. Move to, I move okay. to transfer ownership. That was just an email. All right. I move to, I move to sign. Okay. Francine does it and I second it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Co cooperative group here. All, yeah. right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any other necessary business that cannot wait until the August 20th regular select board meeting? I was gonna bring up the annual report under this, but it's already been dressed earlier, so I hope that gets out because it's already late. It's late, going. I'll yep. say it, yep. Okay, so hopefully next week on that. Anything else? Okay, there are no PCFs and there are no licenses and permits and warrants. Okay. We have warrant W20 5 to pay our bills, ongoing bills, for $61,719.81. Um, warrant P20 4 for $240,205.77 for payroll. Uh, warrant PD 20-4 for $38,851.61 for payroll deductions and PD 20-4A of $158,661.29 as an addition to payroll deductions. Just a note on P20-4, we seem to be photocopying every other page. So just for the future, I have only oh, pages no. two, four, and six. Oh, you're looking at the uh, printout you got? As well as what I looked at in line. Oh, well, the, uh, the online one has page three really? and, yeah. Okay, well, it's I got both them. Okay. Okay. Did you want to take a look at it, Chris? No, that's okay. I, I had actually, actually, I had a quick question on just one of them. What was it? Um, hold on. Um, On 20-5, page, yeah. 20 I, I page one. Saying. Yep. Yeah, sorry, on, on 20-4, four. are you seeing the, I'm seeing only even pages, but I, it could be my copy, so. Uh, but on warrant 20-5, um, just under the police equipment and maintenance, it was just a large sum, so I was just curious what the $12,383 might have been for. Does it say what the vendor is? Yeah, it's, a tech, it's a tech company. Tritech Perform? Oh, that's yeah. the, that was that's the annual on. service contract. Okay. Yeah. For their IT? Uh, well, not, not their IT. It is for their CJIS system, criminal justice system. Okay. It is. Thank you. I thought it was for their computer software. I'll find them. 
about the software for their CGIS mm -hmm. system. Okay. We haven't heard back from Charter about the um, consultant piece, have we? No. And of course, after tonight's escapades, I <laughs> am somewhat wondering about that too now. <laughs> Don't worry. But that I'll was keep, a that I'll was keep that, the pedal down. That was an FY19 <laughs> charge, though, was it not? Was that the after? That won't, that, that won't, won't matter. Okay. That won't matter. But I'm be in, very interested to find out why tonight's couldn't go out live. Mm. <laughs> yeah. If it was related to that other issue or not. Any other questions about the warrants? No, I'm fine. Thanks. Fires me. So he just fired me up again. What's that? <laughs> he just fired me up again. <laughs> Sorry about that, Matt. I, and that was just the opposite. I stayed. I, I stayed. I, I stayed cooler, cooler <laughs> earlier. Just, you know, uh, I'm not sure if I'm glad that you're not here next time when they're going to come in person. You, you should be. <laughs> I think I might be a little relieved about that. Yeah. It, might, yeah. it might be a good thing that Matt and I are separated by Christine <laughs> on this particular subject. We might feed off each other. <laughs> Referee here. <laughs> Somebody needs to say it like it is. <laughs> Stop just like, oh, yeah, you guys will get to it when you get to it. I think I'm going to nominate you in your absence to be the person sitting at the board. <laughs> you're the liaison to East Hampton Media. He has something to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> We don't have to vote on those, right? They're already signed by Francine, right? Yeah. So no other documents and minutes to approve. There's two of them, July 9th, regular session, and July 23rd. Has everybody had a chance to look at that, those? Yes, and I have a couple corrections. Of course, okay. I always have to open my mouth. Um, July 9th, a uh, couple small things. Uh, two relate to myself. Um, there was one under the new business where it said that uh, Ms. Fowles feels we need to look at some of the foundations that are currently in place. Um, I probably said something like that, but I was referring to the basic foundations of our bylaws and our zoning bylaws um, is what I was referring to. So some of the foundations that are currently in place so that we can build upon economic development. The way it's worded there is a little bit weird. Okay. So That's the what third I was referring to. Third bullet point, yeah, Ed. The third bullet point under new business. It was looking uh, to look at some of the bylaws and zoning bylaws as as the foundations that are currently in place or something like that, I don't know. But the issue was... So some of the foundations of our current bylaws? And well, zoning regulations. Okay. Yeah, or the bylaws that are our foundation. I don't know how you want to phrase it. Um, and then over on page three, signatures, uh, the last bullet point, just a typo. You can put a Miss Fowles with a F and as opposed to a C. A motion oh, was right, moved right, right. by Ms. Tisch. Where is this? Um, last bullet, under signatures. A motion was moved by Ms. Tishman and seconded by, instead of oh. COW, it's yeah, FOW. FO okay. And then lastly, uh, on the last page, under open time for the public, under Tammy and her concern, uh, she uh, what is written here is that it had she had expressed a concern that it had been difficult getting businesses in town to participate in the Celebrate Southampton um, event. And really what that is is not getting businesses in town, but rather getting town organizations and farms to participate in the celebration because this is really focused on agriculture and the, the businesses themselves were not a focal point of the celebration. It's really looking at the, far, at the, um, the agriculture part and the farms, therefore, and the town organizations. So we were looking for um, the various groups from the Lions Club to the police department to the fire department to various committees in town participating and having a booth or a table uh, at the Celebrate Southampton. So to cross out businesses and and uh, going in person to talk to the business owners rather to talk to uh, various people on the town committees is more appropriate. That's all. First time could set Any other um, edits to the July 9th meeting? All right. Do we have a motion to approve them then? So moved. With the corrections, I, I'll with, with second the three with the cor corrections. Right. I'll second that. All right. Matt and Chris. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Matt and Chris? Yep. Mm -hmm.
All those in favor? Aye. 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 The next set of minutes are July 23rd. I move to approve the July 23rd minutes. I'll second that. Any? Anybody find any edits? Concerns about that? No. Did you get the um, motion and second, Ed? No, who are they? Roland and Fowles. Fowles. Oh, okay. Consistent. Thank you. I like that. Mm. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we have a list of pending items. Are there any that we can cross off or anybody, any that um, there are any updates on? What about the old town hall, Ed? Uh, I'll be setting that. I heard back from Bob Kozub, so I'll be calling the uh, architect and we're to set up that meeting for the second, uh, for next week or the following week. So probably at the next meeting I'll have an update on actually when we're scheduled to get together or okay. we might have even met. Anybody have any questions or add any updates on any of those items? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the select board meetings, possibly the 19th as a joint meeting at Norris Elementary School and then the 20th here and then the third and what was the other date in September? September 3rd to 17th. 3rd and 17th. And 17th of September. Um, open time for the public. And I will not bother to read all this, if you don't mind. I, I, know, I know it by heart. Yep. Okay, good. Um, Tammy Maloon is 298 College Highway. Just want to take, a, again, some time to plug, celebrate for Southampton, which is going to be coming up Saturday, September 14th. Um, story Hour, Town Picnic, The Bake Off. We're going to have Bounce House, Petting Zoo, Games, plus a couple of farms and lo uh, town organizations that have um, come forward to have some um, displays for us. So I just put it out there for the whole town, Saturday, September 14th. What hours, Steve? Uh, story hour is 10 to 11, and then hopefully 11.30, they'll start with a little parade going up, up for lunch, 12 to 1-ish, and activities all the way up to 4 o'clock. We have actually um, a couple groups coming to sing and, um, and some performing kind of things that are going to ha happen also. So lots of activities for kids plus parents and um, and hear some history mm. of what's. We're also partnering with um, East Hampton Media and they're going to be there for us taping that and then doing um, uh, what a promo, like a one minute promo or something. I think the pro yeah, there's um they're, they're going to do a promo for us, but there also there's going to be a booth that you can go in. Yeah and give mm -hmm. your favorites about town, what you remember about things, so that we have a recorded yeah. um, a history mm -hmm. of what people liked about mm -hmm. the town. Great. And how is this being publicized? Obviously here, but. Here, um, we're working on a banner and lawn signs. It's gonna eventually be going over um, the Charter 191 on our thing. Um, Facebook. We've been, we finally have a, actually an actual Facebook page that's out there. Um, celebrate Southampton 01073, I think it is. And um, so we've been going around getting that and finalizing. We've talked to several different, like the highway department and they're on board with us. Um, Randall was very willing to help us with um, some of our requests and we were like, can you help us? And he's like, yep, I got it. I was like, wow, okay. So I was really happy with that. Um, and we have a few more people we have to still finalize and contact. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, I think it's moving along nicely. You know, when the Open Space Committee received the grant, which is the Neighborhood Project Grant, um, there were th those three programs that happened. And um, 
there was a mailing list of you know some of the landowners in town and it was great during those events to see some of the long-term landowners mm -hmm. diana fetterman has that uh, mailing list it might it might be good to connect with her because it was really i mean a lot of people that showed up at those events were some of you know the um people that have been around for a long time that are established landowners and yep. uh, I, I think to get their history would be phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking also of contacting the COA. Well, they're actively involved. Um, the story hour is with them and we're working with them um, actually. In, uh, I think we still need to nail down some people for the story hour though. Yeah. 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 I mean, several people have mentioned a couple of well, people have mentioned a couple of people, but we haven't nailed that down. Yeah, yeah, that hasn't been nailed down. But it starts with here with the senior center, and um, and working right through picnic and bake off and all kinds of Great. games and activities. So wonderful. Saturday, Thank you. Saturday, September fourteenth. Yes, yep. wonderful. Anyone else? Virginia Ahart. Now I'm going to put on a different hat. <laughs> Some of you already know, but uh, the budget was passed mm -hmm. at the state level with the new funds for community preservation. Mm -hmm. The new fee will be $50, not 20, which has been for since for 20 years. Um, this will not affect, I do want people to understand, it will not affect our um, state grant this uh, November, which looks very, very poor, except that they might get, and I question people on this, there's $20 million of surplus if there's $20 million of surplus, then that 20, there is 20 earmarked for us, but we don't know if community preservation will get that or not until the very last. Mm -hmm. But that it's still going to be a very lean year from the state this year, but starting next year, uh, we'll see an increase because the, the uh, new fee of fifty dollars alone. The filing fee for the. Um, Fi the it's uh, your deed. Right. Yeah. So. Well, that's good. It's, yeah. it's good news down the road for community preservation. Mm -hmm. For but sure. Yep. Good. That's great. Great. Don't expect much this year. <laughs> well, that's good news, though. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so then at this time, we're gonna go into executive session, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Number 7, to comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law or federal grant in aid requirements. Approval of executive session minutes is the only agenda item for July 9th and 23rd. Um, we will not be returning to open session, and I'll need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Mm -hmm. Matt and Francine, mm -hmm. and a roll call vote. Roland I. Fowles I. Tishman I. Roden I. All right, thank you very much. We'll just take a couple of minutes and thank you, Ryan.